We're good to go. Good to go. Okay, here we, here we, here we. The Protection and Policy Committee for uh, July 8th and year of our Lord 2019 is now in session. Uh, roll call is Alder Stevens present here. Is Alder Vanderleest in the house present? Is Alder Stoyer here? Certainly. And the chair, Alder Scandal, is also present. We are all accounted and present. Uh, I'll take a motion to approve our agenda. So moved. Motion by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Vanderleest. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, oh, yep, yep, not there. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we have in our agenda before us. I'll take a motion to approve the minutes for our June 24th meeting of this year. Motion, approve. motion to approve by Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder Stoyer. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, our minutes are good. <laughs> Maybe. <Okay. Yes. laughs> yes, we're we are on to regular business. <laughs> Item number one, consideration with possible action on request by Automobile Gallery at 400 South Adams Street to temporarily extend their licensed premises on August 5th from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. to include their front parking lot for an event. Staff. Uh, law department has no objections. Please concur. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer. Second. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Oh, and I should say, uh, everything we do here, unless I say otherwise, because uh, the council did give us final authority on some issues, um, will become final next Tuesday at 7 o'clock at the Six. regular council meeting. Six. Um, Six o'clock, sorry, yeah, yeah, I'm on time. The 16th. Yeah, the 16th at 6 o'clock. Uh, if I say otherwise, then um, it's official after this meeting. But otherwise, you will need to uh, wait until council, the 16th. <coughs> okay, we on to two? Yes, we are. Consideration of possible action on renewal application submitted June 12, 2019 for a Class B combination license by Pablo's Mexican Grill House at 850 Kepler Drive, Suite C, with the approval of the proper authorities. And on this one, the Protection and Policy Committee has been granted final approval authority on the license uh, related until October 1st, 2019. So, staff? The Law Department has no objections. Please concur. Motion to, Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer. Seconded by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously and that will take effect after the meeting. Number three. Consideration was possible action on the release of the 2018-2019 Class B combination licenses to the pool of available licenses due to no action taken for the 2019-2020 license year. Staff. Uh, law department has no objections. Please concur. Okay. So we got we got licenses in our pool again. We can swim. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Number four, consideration of possible action on an application for a Class B combination license for Bullseye 708. LLC at 708 Bordard Street with the approval of the proper authorities. Previously licensed as R and K Neal LLC during the 2018-2019 license year. And on this one, uh, the committee also has final granting authority on it. No yeah. objections from no objections no from staff? staff? No. Please concur. Please concur. I like that. Motion to, Motion to approve by Alder Vanderleest. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously, and that will go into effect after the meeting. Number five. Number five, consideration of possible action on an application for a Class B combination license by MyCView, I hope I said that correctly, uh, individual entity at 100 South Broadway Street with the approval of the proper authorities, previously licensed to Hillman LLC during the 2018-2019 license season. And again, we have the final authority on this one. That? Uh, law department has no objection. Please concur. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
That passes unanimously. Number six. Number six. Consideration with possible action on an appeal by Everett Butzing, 1621 14th Avenue, regarding his dog Henry being declared dangerous, previously held at the June 10th Protection of Policy meeting. Staff is. Are we set to go on this yes, one? Yes, the appellant is here. Um, okay. As we mentioned um, at the prior meeting, so this was held over from the last meeting. Um, it is a quasi-judicial hearing. Um, notice was given to the appellant. The appellant did not appear at the last meeting. Notice, uh, he was re-noticed. He is here uh, this evening. Um, however, he has made it, made it um, clear that he will not be contesting um, the matter anymore. Um, however, I, just for the record and to ensure that we're covering all of our bases, we're going to have um, Officer Mavis sworn in again, have her summarize her testimony that was pre uh, presented to the committee at the last meeting, um, have the appellant also make his statement for the record, and then the uh, committee should still state for the record um, its findings, statements, or, uh, findings of fact, conclusions of law, um, just so that we can wrap that up. Um, okay. So, same kind of process. Okay. Officer Mavis. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, that's oh, right. Yes. Somebody, do you just, yes, yes. Yes, yes. raise a limb. Uh, do you swear solemnly to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me God, yes. <clears throat> um, kind of to go over uh, what we touched on at the, the last meeting, um, April 19th, there was an incident where there was a dog that was running at large um, from its property at 1621 14th Avenue in the city. Uh, that dog uh, did attack uh, a woman's dog who she was walking um, at the intersection of Liberty and 14th Avenue. Um, her dog, she had a Shih Tzu, uh, sustained uh, multiple injuries. The owner who was walking the dog had to interject. She herself sustained injuries. Um, and uh, I did some follow-up work on the incident on April 23rd. Um, because the injuries were quite significant, I believe you guys had gotten a, a packet um, to depict the photographs. Uh, and from there, I made contact with the dog owner who was identified at that time as Everett Butzing um, and advised him um, citations were issued and what our dangerous dog uh, declaration ordinance is and that the dog could be considered uh, being declared dangerous if there were future incidences. Um, a month to the, to the day, on May 19th, there was a repeat incident where the dog again was off property intersection um, of 14th and I believe Liberty Street and ended up attacking uh, a Basset Hound, sustaining multiple injuries. Um, that dog required medical care as did the first and uh, the, the owner there then also intervened and she was bit in the process. So we had uh, two attacks to two different animals and two bites to humans as well. At that time um, a supervisor alerted me to the incident and I then declared the dog dangerous following the multiple attacks that we've had there. Questions? Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. Motion open the floor. Motion open the floor. Motion open the floor by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The floor is now open. Mr. Butzing? Butzing? Butzing. Thanks for coming in. I know this must be kind of tough for you. Doing this. Uh, yep, yeah, you need to swear in. So, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. I just wanted to first, you know, come here to face you to state my apology for missing the last meeting mm -hmm. uh, with the hectic uh, moving and everything, kind of just settling down and figuring everything out. I It passed my mind. And I, in the context of trying to get a hold of Officer Mahoney, it, it just it didn't work out. Um, but secondly, um, I have been making payments on these or on these violations to get them paid in full. Um, the one thing I do have a concern with uh, that hopefully I can get documentation or understanding of tonight is medical bills that I'm responsible for for each person that was involved in the incidences. Um, and to, uh, to kind of spin off of that, uh, I did I've moved out of the city, the city limits of Green Bay. Um, and through that process, uh, Henry has, Henry being, he was a rescue from the Oxford Humane Society. Um, he has a, you know, a tough past. Uh, I 
I adopted him in, in the essence of you know trying to save him, and in turn he has been the same for me. Um, during during the moving process and after the last incident and everything that's gone on, um, I had taken Henry to um, intensive training for three weeks. I stayed in Plymouth, Wisconsin, uh, with a trainer, which a lot of things have been different. A lot of things have changed with his demeanor and obedience and everything like that. Um, these outlashes that that have happened, I. We're not involved in them. I, the first one, I um, actually was with my sister, and the second one, I was in the house at the time. Um, as soon as it happened, I was, you know, quick to respond to um, the scene. But I've taken extra precaution to make sure, you know, these incidents don't happen again around the house and with this training, and you know, doing doing work each day with him to ensure that he, you know, can be a viable member of society. So. Um, I just wanted to step in front of you today to basically just state that, um, let you guys know that things are going to take care of. Like I said, I would like an understanding of, of the of the process that I have to take for the medical bills and everything like that. I left a voicemail on Officer Mavis's phone. I don't know if she had a chance to obviously um, view it today. So, well, uh, uh, Officer Mavis, or uh, perhaps legal, could. Uh as far as the medical bills, that would be a private matter between you and the victims. Okay, I, yeah, that's not. I don't know if it was appropriate for me to actually reach out to them. So that's. I think so. If okay. they, I right. think they would like yeah. to have their medical. Yeah. No, yeah, no, I understand that. Right, right, but I, I know what you mean. I didn't know if it was appropriate for me to reach out mm -hmm. to someone who the incident happened right, to right. with my dog. I just, yep, yep. That's why I, I didn't know that the misconnection mm -hmm. or the communication yep. lied with that. I so. understand. It's but but that, it should be fine. Okay. Well, if that, then I will definitely reach out tomorrow to each of the uh, the victims and you know kind of figure out how to take care of it appropriately so and each the violations I have scheduled planned uh, the first one happened April 19th all those should be paid for later in the month um, and then the one on um, the following month that happened that should be taken care of yeah, early next month so everything should be you know clean and clear and you know just keep moving forward and getting him you know in the proper setting so Thank you. Yep. Question. Everett, thanks for coming in. I, I guess the only question you, there were two different incidents, and you and the dog was not leashed at the time. Oh, uh, the first one, in my understanding, from what I heard from my sister, is that she was letting him out outside uh, on a leash. Um, the leash was, you know, wrapped around his neck and clipped um, together. Apparently, what she states and what I understand from her is that he got off the leash, saw a dog in the distance. I. I wasn't there again. This is what I'm. Oh, we're just trying. Uh, I'm understanding what she was telling <coughs> me is, dog got off the leash, saw the dog in the distance, ran over the dog, um, and obviously we know what happened from there. So well, the second incident, you said you were in the house and came out. I was in the house. Yeah. So so, so the second incident was um, so the house we lived at on 14th Ave. There was a breezeway between the garage and the house, um, and the breezeway to go outside because there's sort of a backyard that was actually fenced in. Um, but the breezeway to go to the front area, to the driveway was, uh, we actually had barricaded. The door was loose. Um, so we barricaded to make sure um, our other dog was not able to get out at the time. But she happened to get out. Um, it's a little, maybe 45, 50 pound little white dog. Um, she was actually in heat, so she was wearing a diaper and actually ran up to um, the lady uh, prior. And then I heard screaming, um, and my girlfriend heard screaming about this little dog. Um, was running up to her. So then she had looked out on um, the front door and as she was stepping outside and the, the glass door was closing, um, Henry had then snuck out of the house. So well, I know that it's, it's hard for everybody around, but I, you know, it's one of those situations where the dog needs to be safe and, and yep. in, a, in a spot where that yep. won't happen. Yep, no, completely. And that's why I've taken the precautions measures I have to try to, you know, the, it's never going to happen again. Eliminate the possibility of that of these altercations ever happening. Um, so, yeah, that, and I understand. I'm not here to you know to disregard anything that happened. Mm -hmm. Obviously, take full responsibility for everything that has happened. You know, he's my dog, and I did adopt him. And through the adoption process, I I was aware of the responsibility that I was taking on. So, okay. it's just it's it's an incidences that you know are unfortunate. I can't take back, but you know they happen, and learn from it, and move forward. So I appreciate your stance on that. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other questions or anything? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Motion to Let's close the floor. Or uh, uh, I don't know about yeah. it. Anyone else that's here for this? Um, so no. Okay, motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor by Alder Stoyer. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
closed. Okay, the floor is now closed. Um, we need to state the findings of fact. And I do have a question, though. Um, if we do declare the dog dangerous, mm -hmm. and let's say 10 years down the road, uh, Mr. Butzine moves back, mm -hmm. do we, is there? I don't think the, the declaration expires. So if the dog's been declared dangerous, then that dog wouldn't be able to live. Can he then come back and, and say if 10 years gone by and there hasn't been an incident, then have another crack at this? Or how would that? I think once, I'm not sure what the, the statute of limitations is for appealing the decision from here, but I'm sure there's a window to be able to appeal that to circuit court. And then once that's passed, then, <coughs> then there's no way of reopening the matter. Okay. Oh. Yep. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I was going to ask Mallory. Um, so, the, if the dog, the dangerous dog, moves out of the city of Green Bay, we don't have any jurisdiction over it. But with that being said, uh, do other communities around this area have stipulations on a dangerous dog? I, I'm just trying to get a handle. Have to reopen the floor. Oh. You well, know, I'm going to have to reopen if, the floor. Yeah, if no, no, she's staff. Well, she's staff. She doesn't. She, you don't have to open the floor for, for staff. staff. Correct. I don't. But if no, you'd but like he was an answer from the appellant, you would hmm. have to reopen. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, but anyway, I just wanted to get a, a clarification on that, and if need be, if we need to open, reopen the floor because he was raising his hand back. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh. So. so normally in these circumstances, if a dog's declared dangerous um, in one municipality, uh, we are to notify the surrounding municipalities of wherever it's relocated to, whether it's Bellevue, Alloway, De Pere, we normally notify either the humane officer or the law enforcement division and say um, we have a dog that's declared dangerous based on these circumstances and it's their determination whether they were to allow it into their municipality. Um, at this time we do not know where Mr. Butzing has relocated to um, and so that's that's where we're at. Yeah, well if you didn't know relocated how did you contact? You just sent it out to all the different jurisdictions. We have. I have not notified. Um, the dangerous dog declaration is. I made the um, motion to have it um, declared dangerous, but it has to pass here yeah. before everything's finalized. Okay. And then once it's finalized through here, and then the full city council, that's when we then disperse that information to whichever municipality oversees that animal. Okay. All right. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, okay. Motion. Open the floor. Motion. By Alder Stevens. Second by Alder Stoyer. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. Yep. Oh, oh and I'm sorry. I should have had you uh, oh. state your name and address for the record. Okay. I can say it right now. Yeah. Um, Everett Butzine, 2977 Clifford Court, Green Bay, okay. Wisconsin 54311. So I'm in the village of Bellevue. Um, I have um, tried to, in, to be in contact with. Um, the humane officer that she actually does Bellevue, Alloway, I believe Howard, um, some other um, smaller municipalities. She's busy. Yeah, right. So um, I have been in contact with her, hopefully hoping to set up a meeting to discuss and talk. Hopefully she can come out to the house and I can kind of, you know, have a conversation with her, with Henry there um, to kind of, you know, understand and show her things that I've done and things that we have done to, you know, improve the safety. Um, we do live in a cul-de-sac with, um, you know, kids and other dogs. And through the process of taking him on walks and things, he's been responsive to me. And with dismissing, we actually had um, the neighbor kids actually came over, and they're kind of playing around with Henry a little bit. And he was he was you know happy and giving him big big dog kisses and everything. So have you talked to the neighbors at all about your dog? No, I have not talked to the neighbors at all about the dog. Um, that that's so I want to so I want to take care of you know speaking with the humane officer first, and then you know each process that goes along, then obviously it'll. You know, everything will be discussed with anyone who's involved in, like, that's a respectful thing to obviously reach out to neighbors and anyone who will be seeing Henry or in contact with him, maybe on a daily basis or whatnot, so. Yeah. Yep. Thank Thanks. You. Anything else then? That should be it for me. Okay. Thanks. Motion closed for. Motion closed for by Alder Steuer. Second by Alder Vandalist. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The floor is now closed. So we need to make a statement of fact that we declare the dog dangerous. So do I need to do motion. more than that? Um, if there are any facts that were stated as far as um, well, the, two the fact that the dog had two separate incidents attacking uh, two different animals and 
uh, also the owners received some injuries. Uh, uh, so we hereby declare the dog dangerous in Green Bay. That's good. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Motion by myself. Me, myself, and I. So the motion would be to deny the appeal, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. So that would be motion by... Second. Seconded by Alder Vander Leest. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. Thanks for coming. On to number seven, consideration of possible action and appeal by Ashley Harper regarding the denial of her operator's license. Staff. Uh, the law department recommends denial of this appeal um, as the applicant is a convicted felon and habitual law offender for numerous offenses that substantially relate to the licensed activity, specifically several felony drug convictions and a number of liquor law violations. Um, the committee has the um, Appealed um, for the denial memo um, with all of the relevant offenses. Please concur with that. Motion open the floor by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, floor is now open. Anyone care to speak on this? State your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Ashley Harper. Uh, my address is 1674 Shawnawab, number 8, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54303. Okay. Is there anything you care to share with us? Or uh, yes. Um, so I saw in the letter when I had first met tonight, and it said that you, I could appeal it if I showed rehabilitation. Um, and I have. And I, okay. Please. Yep. Um, do I show it to you? No, uh, up okay. here. Um, this was one of the, and I have not gotten into any trouble since, and that which was five and a half years ago. That was one of the treatment programs I did. And then um, I had also did a six month ERP. I, I had that printed there once. So it's the AODA residential, yeah, completed, and those were my facilitated. How long were the programs? Um, the ERP was six months, and then uh, the AODA uh, was. Um, I did IOP and then it was aftercare, so it was three times a week for eight weeks, I want to say, and then every Friday for another eight weeks. And you made all of them? Yep. And have you, have you uh, been bartending or? I, I, I do a little bit of everything and I've been working at, uh, next month will be two years that I've been at Angelina. Oh, okay, so it's yeah. at Angelina. So yep. Okay. Uh, it's uh, two years I've been there, and um, and I've gotten a raise, and then uh, this is part of another uh, promotion. Um, so in case Romano, who is the GM, if him or uh, Jennifer Fay, who is the manager, if you know if they're not there because they're the ones with the license on the premises, um, if there were anything ever to come up where neither one of them could be there, so was, mm -hmm. uh, my boss was looking to promote me. So. Do you have any letters from your? Um, I I don't. I was. Um, just informed that, that I should have done that, and oh. I can definitely do that. Romano Cervantes will definitely write me a letter of recommendation. Okay. Questions, anyone? <coughs> okay, uh, what? Well, not right now. I okay. Suppose maybe um, open it again if we need yep. Uh, I don't think, I think I asked all on, was it just it? Uh, you've been working for two years, mm -hmm. and there hasn't been any incidents, and no, I, the yeah. record's been clean for five, and you've done this rehab, and mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've done, accomplished a lot. I've, after getting out, um, of course I regret all the trouble I've gotten into, um, but um, it saved my life. I was on a, a bad track, and those, um, especially that ear treat, uh, treatment program I did was life-changing, life-saving. And I'm glad that I did it. So and I've so I've done a lot and after I got out and got my own place and moved here and just bought a new car and like I said I've been at Angelina's for almost two years and trying to keep on keeping on and accomplishing good. So mm -hmm. okay. thank you. Motion 
Floor. Motion closure floor by Alder Stoyer. Second it by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. What do you think, gentlemen? Five years. I know a lot of times we look at the dates mm -hmm. on things. The longer that it <coughs> has been behind you, the better it is. Mm -hmm. But uh, regardless, <coughs> we, have, we look at the severity as well and uh, just some of the things that happened. But uh, I think those documents help quite a bit for me, so I'm, I'm, I'm fine. So I, I'd make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer. Seconded by Alder Vanderlees. Any other discussion? Yeah, I'm, I'm on board too. I think you know she's done the rehab and she's <coughs> done fine since then. You know, documentation's five years ago and has many issues. And I'm quite certain that Angelina's is would vouch for her. I don't think. You know, it's always nice to have that documentation, but I believe you. So, <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously and will take effect after council. When it goes through council, right? We don't have the final authority. Right. No. Yep. Yep. So. Number eight. Number eight. Consideration of possible action appeal by Eric Chang at eight thirty Howard Street regarding invoices. Invoice. Invoice. Sorry. One nine zero zero. 1317 previously held at the June 10th protection policy meeting staff uh, we would defer this to inspections it's a inspection fee appeal oh. the inspection will speak oh, first and up, yep yes. yep mm -hmm. inspection mm -hmm. any well, uh, do we have there wasn't any document oh no I'm sorry this isn't inspection yeah. this is the, the second number nine huh. is inspection um, this is, uh, I'll defer to PD, to Lieutenant Mahoney on this. PD? Um, is the committee aware of how we do our nuisance abatements? No, um, not really. Uh, I don't recall. Um, there has to be qualifying calls, um, three qualifying calls, so it's not just based on the volume of calls there, um, it's specific types of calls. Uh, we did reach three qualifying calls, one from uh, April 27th of 2018, then uh, May 9th of 2018, then May 17th of 2018. Once we hit the qualifying calls, we notify the owner of the property, who was, um, I believe, Eric Chang, is the listed owner. We notify the owner of the property via certified mail, which was done on May 24th of 2018, and we ask them to come in for a meeting. When we have the meeting, our goal is to improve the situation. It's not to issue citations or have them pay money. Our number one goal is to improve the neighborhood and improve what's causing the issues. At those abatement meetings, we sit down with the property owner, go over things that we could do together to help improve, but we make it abundantly clear that if things don't improve, that they are liable. Um, Officer Catherine couldn't make it tonight, so she typed up a synopsis of things that happened at 830 Howard over the past year um, that shows that they weren't helping solve the problem. They were pretty much ignoring it or not listening. Um, in 2018, one of the tenants and her ex-boyfriend or her boyfriend who was a sex offender were not approved to live there. Um, they were violating their ICS housing um, since they were paying 100% of the rent. We were sent there two times for that. Um, Eric Chang was notified of it. The property owner, um, he never called us back. He ignored us every time we tried reaching out to her. Um, the referral letters that we sent to the property owner specifically advised the landlord to contact the community police officer so we could work to solve the problem. On May 31st of last year, uh, we had the meeting scheduled. Um, Eric, the owner of the property, didn't show up, but his mother, Jen Kuo, attended. At that meeting, the abatement paperwork checklist has gone over with her line by line. Here's what you have to do to make the property better. Um, she signed the paperwork verifying that she received all the information and uh, to work with on the nuisance abatement plan. 
Um, and in it it says she understands that if corrective actions are not taken as the owner, uh, they may be issued citations for maintaining a public nuisance as well as assess the cost of future police services. On July 30th, she called us to do a walkthrough as she was having a problem with her tenant that was being evicted. She made no mention to us she already had a tenant lined up to move in the very next day. Didn't screen them, didn't ask for our help, who they're bringing into the property. Um, on August 5th, the mail from that residence, approximately a week later, called us um, and identified that it is his house and we found out that mail is on parole and has an extensive criminal history. Um, approximately two weeks after that, um, we attempted to arrest a male from that resident that had a full extradition warrant. Uh, the male fled from us at a high rate of speed in his Dodge van. We attempted to contact Ms. Kuo. Her phone number was not working. We had no other way of contacting her. Um, we contacted the tenant that was living there. She identified the male as the father of her children. We also did a background check on her since she was living there and found out that she has numerous traffic and civil judgments against her and she was recently um, issued two citations for theft. Um, to us it was clear that there was a clear instruction to screen the tenants and uh, I believe Eric Chang is listed as a property owner but Jen is the actual owner. Um, she didn't screen her tenants then. On September 1st of that year uh, we made <coughs> in contact with her to talk about the subject that fled from us in his parolee status. Um, she advised us that he is not a tenant. Um, we documented that she and her son are still responsible for any and all activity, even if it's not a tenant. Um, the very next day, we filled out a no trespass form for the male that fled, emailed her a copy with instructions on how to do the no trespass. Um, she refused to sign it and said that he has his own apartment, he wasn't a tenant. So to us, it showed she wasn't interested in working to help solve the problem. She wasn't help us dealing with an issue there. Approximately a week after that, we went to seize a dog in the backyard. It was a pit bull that was tied up with a cord wrapped around so many times around the deck post it couldn't move and it was forced to stand in a mud puddle. Um, there wasn't adequate food, water, or shelter for the dog. Um, when we were there, um, the gentleman that ran from us actually came back home, so we took him and the dog into custody. Um, that again shows that the owners of that property were not assisting the PD. They kept ignoring us. We wanted to work with her. Um, April of this year, we had another incident with um, that address again about people blocking the driveway. When we went there, uh, we talked to the tenant who was eventually cited for uh, possession of marijuana, so that we issued uh, Mr. Chang a maintaining a public nuisance residence for our citation. Um, so overall, we have tried working with the owners. We wanted to work with them, um, but our volume of police calls, and I could tell you between the what we built for and to now, the calls have not gone down. In fact, it seems they've actually gone up, and we haven't even built those. So we find it appropriate, the bill that we sent, we could have built a lot more, uh, but we chose not to. We are, we want to work with them to get a better neighborhood, but it seems everything we do, we're just being ignored. So we figure this is the only way um, to try and gain compliance. And how much are, are we building them? Uh, it's $445.44. Okay. Question? Lieutenant, uh, have the neighbors called in quite a bit on these? Um, it's been various neighbors, some are anonymous. Um, it's various neighbors with animal complaints, disturbance complaints. Um, uh, CP Castor, and she's the officer assigned that area, she's been trying to work with to improve the quality, but <coughs> yes, it's a so frequent. So what, when was, can you give me like the, when, when the first incident was, um, roughly, and how many there have been? The first. The first qualifying call that we chose to use was April 27th of 2018. What was that qualifying call? Um, yeah. It was an animal call. Okay. Um, I, they received a written warning. I don't know if it was loud barking or with the type of call. Um, it just shows that it was an animal call. And <coughs> since April 27th... It's over a year now, right? A little yes. Over a year. Okay. I have a question. Oh. 
We've oh, had finish. up and from you said you chose the very first call to now, we've been called to that address 38 times. In a, in a year or two months? Correct. Question on Stevens? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. Yeah. That, okay. So it's over two a month. Correct. And, and to make you aware, there was another pending bill. I don't know if, I, I believe that's where there might be some discrepancy. The, there was another pending bill, another invoice um, for $81.20. So eventually, if she appeals that one, grand total is five twenty six sixty four, but it's just this first one. We could have built a lot more. I talked to our crime analyst. They chose not to because they still want to work to make the neighborhood better instead of constantly billing. So is this a two-plex or a four-plex? Um, that I, I believe it's a two-plex. I'm not 100% sure. So I think it might have been a four-plex. Single, single family. Okay. All right. Okay, that's all I have for now. Any other questions for staff at the moment? Okay. Uh, motion up to the floor by Elder Stoyer. Second. Second by Elder Vanley. Still in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the floor is now open. If you could please state your name and address for the record. My name is Yin Chen Court, 3621 Glen Havens Court, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54301. Okay. Uh, you heard the uh, yes. officer. And um, I was kind of surprised. Um, but you should you should okay, address okay. us. Though. I was kind of surprised, officer, uh, mentioned about I'm not cooperate. I'm very cooperative. If you can, you know, I work with the city inspector Donna and uh, Rutherford, and she's on medical leave. You know, she know how much I did tremendous improvement since my son purchased this property 2017, and this is my first experience dealing with a clientele because um, the rent uh, the previous renter they all have a um, contract lease with the ICS. ICS is then the, as a housing and uh, it's very specific who is going to live there and sometime I will talk to people um, you know credit I check the credit and, uh, and I will, you know, give them a chance. I just want to make sure, because they all have a wonderful kids, and I make sure the kids go to school, the first renter. But this is a really tremendous experience for me, and I believe people. And the, I think the next, uh, next door neighbor, 826 Howard Street, she like to call police. But every time when the uh, uh, officer, Charlie Kastner called me, I always respond to her. I always, and once I even had a meeting, I think we at the police office, we have city staff, inspector, and the police, and they find out her boyfriend was sex offender. I didn't know that, but I'll make sure only the people on the list live in that house. And I've been the business, I mean the real estate business for more than 20 years. And I'm really good about, uh, uh, but I, you know, I never check uh, the criminal background because I never, dealt with the situation, but I just want to make sure respect the property because uh, based on the, the agreement I have contract with ICAs, I thought that be if they, if they disrespect the property and then I can determine the, um, they were losing the housing. So when, when I met with the, at the police of, um, department with a city with a you know I find out her boyfriend sex offender and I just said and I was kindly asked her say you need to move up and she was kindly you know understand the situation <coughs> I didn't have to go to eviction she moved out the next day then a friend of mine's um, friend say this lady is looking for looking for uh, a rental and she's qualified for ICS. I always believe like if I work with us ICS I have a little bit more security. So anyway, so she moving and the officer um Kasten called me and said her boyfriend um, um has some kind of record but I say her boyfriend's not on the lease and I know if you're not on the lease you're not supposed to live there. So an office suggests me to not transpassion and then uh, because of her boys um, so I called the 
the renter's boyfriend, P PO office, and she, um, I think her name is Christine something. She told me this guy, her boyfriend, does not live in on the 830 Howard Street. He has his own address. So I told, um, I call, I respond the uh, office, Chris, uh, Kass Kassen, and I say, I'll make sure I told the renter, say, if your boyfriend live here, I will call the AC ICS. You lose um, the privilege getting the housing. So, you know, I, I think the next door neighbor like to call the police, and I always tell them, say, you know, I, I just find out, and you know, I was out of town, out of country, and I stopped by the police department today. I get all the, uh, the day I say, parking, parking, parking. I don't know. Uh, every time when I, Eric received the letter, he, we have really good communication. And I always contact um, um, uh, uh, office castnet. And the last instant, uh, one of my renter who, it's a wonderful, wonderful renter with kids. They do good. The, the, boy, the girl's going to the college, UWGV. Her son was visiting her. And the, somehow her car, his car, a little bit blocked. Sometimes it can be confused. Blocked. The neighbor's driveway is maybe five inch. So she called the police and, and police stopped by. And the, unfortunately, they found the boy uh, has illegal uh, possession. And uh, Office Kastner contacted me. I said, "What can I do?" You know, I told he not he's not living there. And see, his mother can be a witness. He's not living there. But Office Kastner asked me, say, um, a system. He sent me the phone. Send me the phone, and I say I will. I say uh, for no transgression. So I signed the phone. I think on the April 18th, and I emailed to the office. So she will find the paper. So I always very cooperative because I did a lot of improvement and I want to create nice housing for some of the family. Like for instance, now the, this renter moving um, March 8th and I interview everybody, interview, make sure, and they've been wonderful, wonderful, wonderful renter. I just don't know why people like to call, to call the police because, uh, you know, I have good relationship with my old renter. I respect that unless unless they did something illegal, and uh, the one with the boyfriend that I haven't finished and I just like, mm, you need to move out. I said you need to move out because uh, I'm getting too much policeman call. And my one of solution I was talking to my son. Unfortunately, you know, I manage this property. He doesn't know anything. And he's in the, he teaching the class, maybe one of solution, just sell the property. But I really want to give this family an opportunity living, they love the area. It's a five bed, it's a four bedroom, one and a half bed, fence the yard. But every time policemen, I receive um, anything from, from the police, I always respond. And I always, I without the, um, but I was surprised uh, the comment from the police cast and say, I'm not called, I'm not, I'm not cooperated. That's not true. Because this is my property. And uh, if, if you ask a uh, uh, city inspector, Donna, he said, Jen, I wish I can clone you. Because you, when I ask you to fix something, repeat something, you fix, you know. You need to fix the, the garage door. Because <coughs> you call because now I got a new garage door. And uh, even the ICS inspector said, Jenna, can you, would you like to invest more because you are a really good landlord because if I inspect and give you a deadline, you will get way before the deadline you fix. Because I'm kind of person, I'm kind of person on my policy. I won't rent you the place, I won't live myself. But I don't know how, I was going to, like years ago, but the first time, I think first three months, is getting a call. And I know who called. I, Actually, I want to call the city council in that district. How can I solve that problem? I really want to have a mediation with the lady next door because I tried to um, talk to her when I purchased, and she liked to make some comment. I don't like it. So maybe, and uh, it's difficult for me to talk to her. Someone two o'clock in the morning, you can smell the alcohol breath. 
and once I called the police because she, she did something, um, the renter feel very uncomfortable. She's taking the picture, but I just, you know, I just want to say, you tell the renter, just be nice, just be yourself. You know, I just know why I'm always. Here. I know because I was surprised, like, and I, I stopped by the police department and asked for the report, and I, I didn't know it takes about a week or something to get actual report, and I find I was. I said, I didn't know this is going on, like fraud, scam, parking, parking, like miles, miles long. And also I got a citation for 1321, another citation, 500 something. And the, the 400 invoice I never received. It was sent to Eric Chain, the yes. owner of the house. Eric and I, we have really, I checked his mail. But we, it, was, it was mailed to him, so, so I don't know what happened since then. I have this one, like eighty-one dollars, and <coughs> um, I know citation thirteen twenty-one. I know that's another one. I gave my lawyer, lawyer, and he he didn't email to me. It was like five hundred something. I don't even know what's this for. But I, you know, if you talk to Steedings, but I'm good landlord. I take care of the property, but I just don't know. How are we going to? How I'm going to stop people calling? Well, we know. Yep. Yeah, uh, question. I, well, if, if, if I have some questions. Yep. Yes. Yep. I have some questions okay. too. Well, well thank Ms. Chang yes, for sir. coming in. Uh, I don't think we have any doubt that you're, you know, fixing things and mm -hmm. doing things. The questions are with the citations and mm -hmm. some of the issues but, but that the people. It's not the, the people. Sounds like the building. The building. How many you're doing great. How many people the, live there right now? How many? Now we have uh, this family. And the single mother with uh, um, four girls and two boys. So and it a, you said it's a single family, right? Single family. So four bedrooms, one live, and half bath. How many people live in the building? Six. Okay. Yes. One, fam the, one family. One family. And the daughter is going to the UWDB. And they, the reason, you know, I rent and I call the school, make sure they have a, they do good in school, because I want to provide that's, a good environment so for the kids. How many properties do you own? Um, Eric owned this one only, and a manager, and also a manager. I'm the real estate business, and then the, and I manage another one on Elmos Elmo Street in Chestnut, and never get any single call. And I manage the real estate. You know, I still have like a two duplex in De Pere and one single family, and this is the really tough experience for me and I think I'm just going to sell the property. When did you meet with the police department? Um, I think it meeting? was in the winter time. That was the um, sex offender. I don't remember exactly the date. Okay. But you met it with them once? Once, in person. Mm -hmm. And with the city inspector and the city employee and the three or four yeah. But, but yeah. Lieutenant, do you know the date? Uh, she met with us to go over her abatement plan May 31st of 2018. And how many qualifying calls after uh, that? Um, no, that prop. I think I first time met probably, probably sometime in September because I asked her to move on, and she moved on in September. So you met with the police twice? I met one, but I see uh, um, Kastner. I talked to her email every now and then. The office. <coughs> I would have to go through, um, they didn't provide me with the data, I'd have to go through each and every call. Um, the but parking, okay. like say some of them show us parking, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a qualifying call. Right. And, mm -hmm. and Ms. Wu, when she said she didn't realize there were this many calls, part of the abatement plan is she signs up for our department alert program which then the report I'm looking at, she gets the exact same report pretty much minute by minute where she will be alerted every time the police get called to that residence. So Did she sign up for that? Um, that was part of her abatement plan. I don't know if she actually followed through and signed up, if she or Eric signed up. She agreed to mm -hmm. sign up for it for part of her abatement plan. I don't know it's abatement plan. Also, did you attend the landlord-tenant session with the police department? No, uh, ICS. Oh, no, with the police department. Not the police to. department. I will now. Yes, I didn't know. I just, if I have a question, I call the officer, um, Charlie Kastner. Then, you know, she's, you know, she always helped me. She's the one saying you need to 
notify, you need to do this, you need to do this. You know, I just say, okay, I keep my open, just like, you know, if, if something happened, I just evict them. Questions? Any other questions? So what do you currently do to screen your tenants? Oh, uh, I met with them every now and then. You know, I, you know, um, their mother and daughter sitting there. Uh, when they renting there like March, and uh, I met with them and met with the kids, make sure they do well in the school. They don't have any issue with the behavior. You pull their credit, their criminal sexual background, any of uh, Not credit because sometimes, you know, sometimes... Um, criminal background? Yes. Sexual this one, offenders? yes. <coughs> Sex offender, never thought because I don't know she has a girlfriend. She has a boyfriend. Yeah. Well, because could be a now female sex offender too, but... This one, this currently moving, yes, I, I did. And uh, unfortunately... the police department where they would explain all that stuff to you? Yes. Yes, and now I know I will go to the, yeah, I, I, you know, every, you know, when I get a new, sometimes I have a question I ask, uh, I call office, Cassie. She's the one suggests me to um, find the, like, no transmission. That's the transmission. Uh, so what are the, I gotta ask what the, f I still wanna ask well, the question. Well, uh, let's I finish with, well, well, I, I need to know. Okay, yep, yep, go ahead. Okay. I mean, what, what the, what the citation, what the costs are right now? Uh, just 400 and 441, something like um, that. Are you talking citation or the what, bill? Well, the bill, okay. the bill. Just ballpark, because I wanted to ask Ms. Chang. $445.44. So, Ms. Chang, I was with the 445, and according to Lieutenant Mahoney, that's a lot less than what it could be or should be. Are you totally against paying any of that? Or do you feel that you're unjustified to no, pay any of it? No, you know what? It? If I have to pay, you know, if I, just, I won't even argue to pay for it. I don't have any, any issue to pay. But my my things like, uh, um, if you look at, um, but how can I stop someone called that property? And I know it's one person call, oh. I'm pretty much. Well, the, 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 the police have multiple calls. And, and if someone calls and there's no Pardon? just cause, the police will then address that call. So if, if someone calls and it's a new, and, and they're making a nuisance, yes. they're reporting things that aren't true, but how can then the police take care of that person. So if someone calls and, and there's justification for the call, the then they have to... I was talking to my son. The only reason I can solve, because I can't have fire someone, I can't have hired someone 24 hours a day stay on the street to make sure, you know, I have a, like right. parking, you know, so I can show you this like parking, parking, like scam. What is the scam? Fraud? What is the fraud? I don't even know. No idea. Oh. And uh, so I think the things I'm going to do, I'm going to just put a house on the market for sale. But then this family, they love the property. They live in there. It's scam. nice parking environment for men. Fraud. I don't even know what those fraud are. Yes. <coughs> They're very nice people. Okay. To answer your question, what's a parking or scam? That's how he said I would have to go through every police call. Right. It could have been a tenant that called us, which is what we like saying, hey, someone's committing a fraud against us or a scam. And, and like you said, we don't count those as a qualifying right. call. Oh. That Yes, there could be many reasons we are sent there. If it doesn't rise to the level, we don't mark it as a qualifying call. There's only certain criteria for us to make it to qualifying call. <coughs> right. Certain I calls the police want to get. The renter never call. And I know the next one neighbor, 826 Howell Street call. But, you know, I really want this family to live there. They're really nice kids. Again, I've mentioned a couple of times the girl. Well, I, I don't think there's yeah, any I problem with the current um, no, but renters how that we're gonna aware of. It's how am I going to stop people? Call. You can't stop people yeah. call. But if, if 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 there's a qualification for the call, then the police should be calling. They'll address it. But if someone calls, if she calls, and there's no justification for it, the police will address that with her. Okay. She'll become the nuisance. Uh -huh. But if there is a cause, then the police have to address it. So you don't have to worry about who's calling. The police yes, will come, and they will. Yes. If there's if if the call is good. 
they'll address it with you. Uh -huh. If the call isn't, they will then address it with the, whoever called. Uh -huh. So that's not really and something you need to worry about. I think you have citation, like one is like 15, 13, 21, another one is like 500 something. And I don't right, know well, what yeah, this But like they said, I mean, the cost is quite down, you know, I mean, considering yes, what it could have been. So, but any more, any more questions I for Ms. Paul? Anything else you care to add? Um, my question, uh, what's the difference between citation and invoice? Citation and? An invoice. An invoice. In what happened is they, there are certain citations that are pending in municipal court for okay. maintaining a public nuisance. That's a those, those are citations that the muni court judge adjudicates to find guilty or innocent. Uh -huh. What this is, once it's declared a nuisance, which it has, we are billing you for our services, not for the actual violation. Okay. We are billing you the time of the officers there so and the, the time they took to be there. So that's why it's invoiced out as that and it's not a citation. So this has been adjudicated in court? Um, I believe it's yeah. pending. Um, oh, it's pending. June 5th, uh, July 15th, 10 o'clock. Ah, okay. Can we, can we, until it goes through the courts, can we uh, charge? What if it goes through, I mean, doesn't that, doesn't the court decision affect? The, it doesn't affect the three qualifying calls. Calls that we, she, the, she makes. is contesting the actual issuing of the citation. After we hit our qualifying calls, we issued the citation for mm -hmm. maintaining a public nuisance. Right. We already hit the three qualifying calls per statute ordinance, so mm -hmm. I don't think it would have an effect on this. Right. You know, this, but this she would be still billed for future calls. Correct. Besides this one. Yeah, potentially she could. This is the things I'm I'm questioning myself, and I wish someone can give me the answer. It's like, okay. you know, I have mm -hmm. renter here, and the boy doesn't live in that house, even because the mother kind of disappoint. Mother is very sad because he in the wrong path, and he he's not living there. He does because she's not the only the person on the list on the lease allowed to live there. He came to visit the mother, and the policeman came came find out possession. Bless you. You know why I'm getting why not, why did I have to go to court because. Uh, somebody came to visit the family or any friend and I'll be responsible because I'll be res because I have owned a lot of property you know many years ago you know but I got but never dealt with a situation like that <coughs> and uh, uh, but but uh, why I'm the one go to the court because I have no control as a property owner you'd be responsible uh, and again, I think I, I think I think the way you have responded with city staff, with inspection, mm -hmm. with fixing the place up. Yes, I know. If you'd have done the same thing with the police, but I we have. wouldn't be here. But, but it sounds like. But I had. But I say, that's why the the family they so nice. Kids has a good grade, go ready to go to college and visit with the mom. Call the employee. You know, good good reference. And they hear the son come visit him and causing the visit the family and causing the problem, I'm here. That's just like a, but I can't responsible just like a, and I just decide I'm gonna sell the property. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, but you, don't, so you I, don't need to sell the property, you just need to stop how? the bad tenant getting in. The police will help you with that. And the police department, I already yes, did, you know, even But if you've got son, a new tenant. The yeah. new tenant and the son, you know, the son's the one Visit the mother, and mother won't let, him, never let him stay because he, he has some issue himself. And mother just said, Jen, not, you know, what can I do? I said, nothing I can do because he's 19, 19 years old. But uh, I didn't tell. I told. I just say, make sure the people on the list allowed to stay there. And they great parent. They great great ten. And then he came here, illegal possession, and I'm here. Yeah. When did the, these new people move in? Uh, March. What, was there any calls after that? Yes, to uh, I believe to get into the competition. Yes, uh, that's another thing. <laughs> Some people accuse the, the friend helping help a friend. Their friend is uh, uh, 
thought um, purse got stolen and accused my renter. And then she's a very nice lady. Help her with the baby said, help her. And uh, she accused her to stealing the purse. And then uh, came into the house yelling and screaming. And they asked, because they nice, my tenant, they that nice, nice people, very respectful. And then they had to call the police because this woman crazy won, you know, just say, I want to check the house. You took the purse. But at the end, she, the, the purse was never lost. And I'm here. But I told them, say, don't call police. I'll take care because police can't do anything anyway. From March, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six. Parking. We've had eight calls. Parking. Four of them were parking. Um, I believe the scam and the fraud, and one was a welfare check. I don't believe I either, none of those, including the parking. I think one parking um, came out as, uh, that's where we issued the citation for possession of marijuana. Um, but you have a theft on there too, right? Yeah, and that one, I, do, I don't know, they might have been reporting, that might have been the purse incident she's the talking person. about, uh -huh. but I don't believe that one would reach the level of a qualifying call if it determined that she wasn't the suspect. Right, a lot of these calls are not what you're being billed for. You're not being billed for every call here, okay. I know, but you see yep. like, a, how can I stop? You know, I, I specifically, yep. you know. Oh, you want this to stop? Just like You a, need to work with the police department. Yes, I'm working with the police, and that's why. you have to understand and. Yes, tr they, no they, trespassing. They'll, the they'll give you documentation. Yes. They'll give you all the paperwork in the world to help you. Mm -hmm. You got to do that. Yes. For them to stop. Yes, I did. And I also talked to them again. And they said, my son will not come here. I promise you, and they, they kept their promise because I, I do believe we them. We wouldn't be here today if you were working with the police department. But I did. I put no trespassing when I find out. There's more to it than just that. You have to work with the, your, the officers over there. When when office call me, I always respond. Like, you know, like the first time I met in if the If they want the you police. to do criminal background, sexual offenders, if you I police did. department wants you to show them that you're doing that, you need to do that. I did it with the third one. The first one, sex offender. So this I this one's know. probably good, but yes. the people before. The first one, I asked them to leave. The second one, um, you know why? I just say, you know. Um, Move. Sure. Well, uh, yeah, I guess. Go ahead. I think moving forward, ma'am, it would be wise for you just to pay up your citations. Yes, I'm more and, than happy. Uh, just work more closely with the police department. I think that'll be the best step for you. You mean the, the $1,300 citation or the bill? They're talking about the invoice that you billed was $441? Or yeah, 445. 445. Okay, 445. Okay. What I would do is pay, pay those citations, yes. talk to the Green Bay Police Department, the invoice. and uh, pay them, and, and uh, basically work more mm -hmm. closely with the police, and, and you'll probably solve the problems. You, know, you have to have the communication with the with the police department. I would, and, and, I know. And, uh, that, that's all you really have to yes, do. Yes, because this is learning. Yeah. The next time I just say, you know, I, I don't really want to bother the police unless they call me. Well, I will. no, it's no bother. The uh -huh. police are happy to work with you. They, mm -hmm. want, they want to do that. I'd rather work with her to prevent it than to be at this point, point with yep. all this mm -hmm. time and effort. And, and these aren't the citations. That's a separate issue that we're going invoice. to court. This is just an invoice for police service. Okay. So I don't, I don't, okay. I, I, no problem. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, th thank you. Okay. Motion to close the floor by Elder Stoyer. Second. Second by Elder Stevens. So. We will. Re We'll, we'll figure out what to do and we'll let you know. Okay. Okay. Okay, so. so but you can just sit down. We, we've closed the floor. Okay. There's nothing else for. Okay. Okay. So. Gentlemen. Do you want to make sure. a motion that uh, the invoices that are due to the Green Bay Police Department that they be paid? And full. In full. full. And, uh, so to deny the appeal. And basically. And to work with the police department. And work with the police department. I'll cycle that. It's a motion to deny. Motion, motion to deny from motion to by Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder Stoyer. And uh, uh, I don't know.
I'm, I'm at sixes and sevens here. I know Miss Cole very well. Uh, she and I have worked together in the past and everything, so I might abstain uh, because I feel prejudiced, but I, I am in agreement, so I don't know. <laughs> it's a weird, well, okay. it's a weird, uh, uh, so I think I'll just abstain. Okay. I, think I, you, uh, I, know, I know the ordinance very well because I have to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. I'll do so a roll, roll, call, on roll call vote. Yep, yep. So okay. we'll vote. So a no, a no, a deny, a deny, a deny. So an aye yeah, a no denies the appeal. Denies the, the, the no, no. A, a yes vote denies the That's appeal because it's a motion to deny. So you're voting yes no. to deny. Okay, yes to deny. Call. Okay. Yes to deny. Yes. Jeez, it should come up, right? It should. D did not. Did not no. come up. No, for nobody. No, no. For, for, anybody? for nobody. Nobody. Okay. Um, then can I just get a roll call and I'll mark it or a voice vote and I'll mark it. Yes. Um, Alder Stevens. Yes. Alder Vanderlees. Yes. Alder Stoyer. Yes. Alder Scannell. Abstaining. That passes on a vote of three. <coughs> Bless you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. On to number nine. Yes. Consideration of possible action on appeal by Dean Van Lannan, 842-844-15th Ave, uh, regarding his reinspection fee staff. That's question. I would defer to Dean and let him go first. Oh, you let him go first. Okay. Uh, motion to open the floor then? Motion to open the floor. Motion to open the floor by Alder Stoyer. Second by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Please step up, state your name and address. Did you, you didn't fill out a form? No, I did not. Okay, if you could fill one out before you leave. But just come up and state your name and address now. My name is Dean. <coughs> I, gotta, I gotta put this piece. Okay. My name is Dean Van Lana. Um, 3840 Circle Ridge Road, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54311. And I am here to uh, <coughs> appeal my inspection fees for that's a duplex that I own on 15th Avenue. I had wrote in a letter uh, <coughs> briefly. Uh, you gotta excuse me. That's alright, that's fine. Right. Take your time, do what you need to do. It uh, basically. What had happened is I got very sick last <coughs> August. I was sick in June. I was hospitalized uh, August of 18. I went into a coma for a month and a half. I was released, I think, in, November, in the end of November. <coughs> um, <coughs> I got home in mid-November from, they shipped me out of Aurora to Pewaukee. Excuse me. Okay, all right. But, um, <clears throat> and what had happened then is they started to, you know, I was I wasn't able to do much when I got home. And about a month had passed, and I had went through my mail, <clears throat> and I had seen that I was getting some things about I own. I used to have like eight properties. 10 properties in Green Bay, and I sold them all in 16, except two. So I had <coughs> noticed that, and I was getting a thing from the inspection department, and I believe, I mean, this is the best of my recollection, I, I forgot my p one paper at home that I kind of had dates on. But I had called Donna Rosenfeld, was my uh, inspector, and I had told her, you know, that this what, what had happened and her response to me was oh I figured something because she didn't know I was hospitalized and I begged her to to she has in the past worked with me very well it's always been good I've had to bring other properties into compliance so she was shocked because she thought it was weird that I did not contact her when the letters were being sent out all of a sudden I believe it was uh,
In February of 19, I started getting $50 inspection fees. And this is continuing and continuing. And I had, I had contacted Donna. And I said, Donna, what's going on? And she goes, Dean, my hands are tied. This is our new policy. I said, I can't do nothing. And I don't have any resources. I don't have any income right now to hire this out. <clears throat> I had my son start working on it. But my son also works full time. And could only do so much. <coughs> so she had referred me to speak to her supervisor, which was a, a Paul somebody. Um, Van Caster. Yep. Paul Van Caster. And I had spoke with him. And he had told me <coughs> to get the stuff done and we'd see what we could do. And then Donna went out on sick leave. And I had been dealing with Bill. And he's here. And... <coughs> The first couple times I had met with him, I had borrowed money from my dad because my son couldn't do it. No, I had to back it up a minute. I had not had tenants in his property since May of 2018, so the property is vacant. And this whole time that I was ill, <coughs> I had a friend of mine and my son were taking care of my businesses, what whatnot. And uh, take your time, whatever you need. Yeah, take okay, I'm sorry. No, no, no problem, no problem. No problem. Take your time. So, I uh, I didn't think it was fair, and I had talked to Bill and Paul both. Uh, that the property was vacant. I don't have money. I don't have any income. I'm disabled. I, I can't do anything myself, which I'm used to doing most of it. And <coughs> it's a vacant property. I said I can understand if I was receiving income from it. You could definitely. Well, it turned out I ended up <coughs> eventually hiring it out and getting within compliance and actually my last time that I had met with um, Bill he had it there was something wrong with my water heater and in a pipe a pipe downstairs that my previous tenants that I was unaware of disconnected his sink down there and he took it out so that was that was news to me yeah. but you know and, and, and to wrap it up I guess I just I pleaded with the city that I've got it in compliance. I, I, ref I did not rent it out, and I told them, I promised them I wouldn't rent it out until it was in compliance, because I don't want to fuck the system. So that's why I'm here today. Any question? How much is the inspection fee? Uh, $2,650. They're sending them to $50 me. $50 a day, right? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, the building was locked, so I don't think it he was going inside to look. <coughs> Any other questions? Uh, right now, but we may later. Okay. Well, then. I'd like to talk to you. Yep. Thanks. Uh, motion to close the floor. Then. Motion to close the floor. Thank All right. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Uh, motion by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Door's not open for staff. Bill Pappy, City of Green Bay Inspection yeah. Department. Ah. I took over this uh, complaint from Inspector Donna Rosenthal, um, who's out on medical leave right now. Complaint. Um, Initiated in June 22nd, 2018, was a complaint that we received. Um, initial inspection was done shortly after the complaint was in regards to rats, mold throughout the house, front doors boarded up, landlord won't fix anything. 
that's what the, the complaint states. So Donna initiated that, that complaint. Um, the uh, packet that I don't, did everybody receive the packet that I emailed out? Okay. So in there, Donna kind of spells out the, the timeline. And in there, there's about a transition period right where I took the case over. Um, orders were sent out um, in the early part of July. Um, around July 2nd is when the orders were, were initially sent out. Um, right around the time that Mr. Van Lan was talking in, uh, in August, there was a correspondence um, back and forth between a gentleman by the name of Chris who had left a voicemail on August 20th that he was hired by Dean to do the repairs would like an extension. Um, we did not grant an extension because Don had already had spoken um, that this was the, the August 22nd date was going to be the date to follow up on the on said repairs. So Donna did the inspection on August 22nd. Nobody was there. There was a no-show for, the, uh, for the inspection. So at that point, we issued a uh, citation, summons and complaint. During that process, that was when we found out during the citation process, we found out that Mr. Van Lannan was hospitalized. Um, Mr. Van Lannan's dad owns, I believe it's your dad, right, Lee? Yes. Yep, owns the property right next door. So another inspector was there um, dealing with um, issues in the neighborhood, alerted us that, you know, um, that we're trying to get in touch with Dean, that Dean was in the hospital. So at that point, um, that you'll see in the timeline, the, the citation and the law department, um, that was dismissed. Gave Mr. Van Lannan another opportunity at that point um, to get the, uh, the property into compliance. Um, Mr. Van Lannan had some correspondence with Inspector Rosenthal in October uh, 22nd of 2018, um, where they exchanged voicemails and talked about the, uh, what's needed for compliance. Um, there was also at the time, it appeared to be a possible hearing for a foreclosure on the property. Um, so a lot of that was going on. So at this point, no, um, he knew the, the, what the issues were, but no enforcement action was being taken in regards to da the daily reinspection fees. Um, that was, uh, additional time was given um, during that process, during the foreclosure process, how that was, how that was taking place. Um, that commenced and that ended um, right around um, January. In January, um, it was Mr. Van Lannis still owned the property at that point, so Inspector Rosenthal gave um, Mr. Van Lannan even more time now into February uh, to get the repairs completed before any enforcement action was taken. Now. So the only action that was taken was citation that was dismissed. So now we're at about mid-February and we're the initial complaint started in June before we had any type of progress made or any type of enforcement action taken. Um, so the, the $50 a day hasn't kicked in yet? It kicked in in February. In February. Yep, and remember this complaint initi initiated in June. June, yep. So working with Mr. Van Lannan, giving him multiple opportunities, he had hired somebody to make the make the repairs, orders were, were, were sent and were given, went through that process. So once um, the repairs were not made, and a little background of how, would, how we do run the $50 daily reinspection fees, we don't have to have uh, photos and documentation of all the violations. So to answer Mr. Van Lannan's question, there was a window um, on the right side of the, the property where the screens were torn and were damaged that was not repaired. Um, so that was what, if you'll see in the photos that we have the documentation, we took photos of that um, exterior visible from the uh, public right of way every day. And, for the next, you know, multiple days, adding up to the, the reinspection total, um, so that that began in in February. Mr. Van Lannan contacted um, Donna once again, um, and around April, there was other correspondence here back back and forth during this process. I'm just kind of summarizing because it's very detailed for you. Um, if you have specific questions, just let me know. Um, April 5th, there was a phone call with Mr. Van Lannan um, to, with Inspector Rosenthal. He was upset. They were talking about the reinspection fees and what was needed for compliance and why that this was happening. Uh, still was not yet in, in compliance at that point, um, but the reinspection fees continued. I took over the case um, in June. Um, Reinspection fees, um, actually May. Uh, Reinspection fees continued by myself. Mr. Van Lannan got in touch with me around that time. Um, it, I 
property was able to achieve compliance um, mid-June, but I myself had to make multiple inspection attempts at the property in order to explain what was needed for compliance in regards to the smoke detectors and uh, other repairs, but we did actually be able to get there. So the, the in short, my summary, why we were able to get compliance is because of our reinspection fee process. Um, a little bit of history on this particular property. Um, since 2014, this property has received 19 total complaints um, at the property. And there's uh, Mr. Van Lana owns one other property, I believe, on Newberry. That property has received 17 total complaints and still has one pending case for um, that, that, that's still pending. So why did we get here? Uh, we understand and empathize with Mr. Van Lannan's health issues, but still there needs to be somebody that manages that property. How and why, how that's done, that is, that's his business, that's he's running a business and how he does that. Mit Inspector Rosenthal, myself, our inspection department gave him multiple opportunities and the people that he had hired multiple opportunities to gain compliance we need communication his dad lives right had dad owns a property right next door very literally right next door to that duplex so there was things and situations that could have been made that could have caused you know communicated with us to let us know here's what's going on here's what here's what needs to happen so the reinspection fees really didn't start until after the health issues you know really took place so Question, uh, Bill. Um, uh, Mr. Van Lannan had mentioned that he owned a number of other properties as well. So yes. I was just wondering, with the issues with this property, and then also the property next door with the father, that there seems to be some other issues as well. Mm -hmm. Did the inspection department have many other issues with other properties that he owned over time? Yes. And yes. could you Two clarify photos. maybe just a little bit? Yep. Well, some examples. Right well, here. but he had ten or use of ten other properties. Yeah. Um, just thinking off. The, the top of my head. List, you know some of the names of the properties as far as the addresses or Imperial Lane. Yeah, I had two on Imperial. I yep. had two on Eastman. I had one on Finger Road. I had one on yep. Oak Ray and Allen. I didn't want to really get into the history, well, but right. And inspection. I, it, I wanted just to focus to on point. this case, but to make a point, this uh, uh, we, 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 we do, do have one. we do right. have a history of of non-compliant issues at in regards to this property. So there's one pending right now. So. In, on two properties, there's we have 36 complaints, just on the two. Um, if I were to do a, a search on the other 10, yes, Alderman Story, there are there, are, there there's a history there. That 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 history is in regard, you know, how we hand we handle each case separately. How and why um, there was this many fees is it took that much in order to gain compliance. Um, so at the times that you know, it's fifty dollars reinspection fee each time. Mm -hmm. Normally, you'll contact fifty dollars a day, every day, a day. But you'll contact the owner to say, "Can you meet me here?" or "Or do you just show up?" Mm -hmm. Of course, to do the daily reinspection. Yes. Yeah. No. We once that once the deadline for non-compliance has passed, then, then it's and we don't have any communication, then what we do is we go out every day um, and determine if there's compliance or not, if they have completed anything. So really, what we need, what we're looking for, is communication. We need communication and what we've been finding is this has been a very very effective tool um, to communicate directly with us in order to get compliance um, I, I I would argue that we wouldn't you know we probably wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for us you know being able to do the reinspection fees because this probably would have been is ended up issuing a citation and would have been prolonged you know for an extended period of time is it unfortunate that we had to have two thousand six hundred and fifty dollars worth of uh, reinspection fees yes but that's that's what needed in order to get compliance at the property. Any other questions? Uh, it, and of course, it, it doesn't matter if the uh, property's inhabited or not. We still want, yeah. Yeah, the your, the neighborhood and the other residents and constituents they sh they should not have to deal with nuisance issues, garbage issues, as you can see, rats, things of I that nature. I a rat in one of the pictures. Yep. If you, there was been been over there multiple times for rats and a lot of it is sanitation issues garbage issues uh, over and over and over again in the last five years even with nobody living there well there's been people in and out of there okay yeah really yeah no the, and, and over the over the five-year period of time, five period, during yeah. this time yeah, yeah, there, yeah, no, yeah, mr yeah. van lana was right, right. there was nobody in and that was part of donna's orders that the unit could not be rented right, out until right. our mm -hmm. until our 
uh, properties in compliance. There were smoke, smoke and CO detectors that needed to be installed, as well as some other, you know, housing code violations. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, what do you think, gentlemen? I think we closed the floor. Yeah, we just called staff. Yeah, it's closed. Didn't have to have an open for staff. So I think. Any thoughts at all? <laughs> well, <laughs> I it seems. I've, yeah. Well, I I got a call from a friend of his, Mr. Van Landen, Warren Wanizek, who's an attorney in town. Yeah. And he said, just listen to this. He's a good person, a lot of good things. You know, I mean, we got a big long list here, and you know, we understand what you're going through. You know, we're very sorry for that, and we wish you all the best. But um, it really gets difficult when you have a property that you know, with all these issues that are going on. And generally speaking, I, I feel that the city does a pretty good job of giving second chances and come on, let's go, let's go. We can do it. So, with that being said, I. Uh, there's got to be some responsibility somewhere. There has to be. And I just feel like it's fallen short a little bit on, on a number of these. So um, I'm not sure, you know, a lot of times in the past we might have looked at this and said, hey, let's split the cost or do different things. There's different ways to look at it. Um, I'm not, I, I'm prepared to, to make a motion to do that, you know, to take the cost and split it. Um, and that would be my motion moving forward. I'll do a second for discussion. Uh, it seems to me there are hardships here. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, if, if there hasn't been the hospitalization, it might be, I, I see that as somewhat excusable. <laughs> I mean, even though I know a lot of this happened uh, 50 after, and I do think there needs to be some accountability, I think there's also have to take into consideration the health and all the after effects of that even after he's out of the hospital and everything. I mean, that's a lot to recover from. There's a lot going on. Um, could he have done more? Probably. I'm sure. And should have. It would have been good. We wouldn't be here. But uh, at the same time, it's, it's a difficult situation. I, I think there should be some leniency here. Some accountability, some leniency, I guess. Did the bill waive any fees before it got to us? Did you waive any fees before it came here? I did not waive any fees, but I did not. I could have charged Dean more fees, fees. than we did not. There right. have been multiple times where we stopped. The, the, the total could have been much higher, but mm -hmm. there's been multiple times, if you see in the timeline that we gave it, there's been multiple times that we, we, yeah. we stopped and we delayed and we gave them opportunities to, to comply, and those, those deadlines came and passed. And it's unfortunate that more wasn't. Uh, you can just bring that up to. Joe, can, can I say something? Oh, certainly. Motion, open the floor. Motion, open the floor. I uh, uh, just just second. We got to open the floor. Motion, open the floor. By Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Both okay. If you just come up and and you can hand that sheet to the staff. Or I can take it. Okay. Yep. Uh -huh. Throughout this whole process, I did try and stay in touch with the city and, and tried to clean my, all my other properties, I always, I, when I did have issues, it was usually because of tenants destroyed my property and then they get behind in rent and then they call the city for inspection. So I got sick of that whole process. All my properties did come back into compliance though. And if Bill would look at that, I'm not a deadbeat landlord by any means. But this situation, and that's what I'm asking for, if I wasn't in this position, I had to get the property out of bankruptcy. They started a bankruptcy process on me. Because when I was hospitalized, a lot of my bills did not get paid like I thought they were being taken care of. So I did have a mess, and I, my brain, the after effects, like you had stated, of being in a hospital, being in a coma for that. I definitely was not I'm on top of my game, and I still aren't. I can't do the things I used to do, so thank God. I, mean, I got some money from my father. 
and we did have issues through the years with rats and we always got it back into compliance so it's not like the rats stayed there that whole side of tone I just want to know is it let you guys know that I did try to communicate with with the inspection department numerous times I even made comments to Bill that I had left him a couple messages and nobody had contacted me so I mean, I'm, I'm glad it's over. I just went. It is hard. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you. Motion open the floor. Ah, uh, close the floor. Second. Motion. Motion by Alder Stevens. Second by Alder Vandal. He's still in favor. Right. Aye. Opposed. Okay, the floor is now closed. There was a motion to. <coughs> what was the motion? Split. To approve Split. the appeal and to, if I understood it correctly, to reduce the fees by half. Yes. So that would bring it down to $1,325. That's my motion. Wow, that still seems like a lot. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's going to start somewhere. Well, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, second, it's okay. already been second. I mean, there's no for discussion. It's difficult so. to, to win on this, no matter which way you look at it. Yeah. So well, I, I, it's I, not I, a perfect solution, but right. that's my solution. Well, I, I think we want to support staff. I think staff is doing the right thing in getting people to get attention and, and get people in compliance. And I think uh, uh, this is an exceptional case. Uh, I, I think if it hadn't been for the medical issues, he'd be out of luck. But if you're going for the medical issues, I don't know that he would. It would be as it is now. Uh, I, I really think uh, medical issues play a part in this. Uh, just how much is hard to determine, you know. But I, I, I find it hard to believe it didn't play uh, some significant role. And um, uh, I think staff did the right thing. They're doing their job and they're getting everybody in compliance. But I, I do think uh, the appeal has, the appellant has a case in, in that this is exceptional um, and there should be some cause for some leniency of some kind. Uh, that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm not exactly sure where the, where the dollar amount lies though. I'd like to hear any discussion on that. We've got 50%. Is it's an arbitrary number. Yep. <laughs> it's more or less. Cut in the, half. It's, well, it's the yep. state that, you know, the city's been doing their job and Mr. Van Landen's had his issues, and granted, it's not easy any way you look at it, but this way there's a little bit on each side. And we're just looking at hopefully moving forward from this point on. But we got to deal with this now. What are your thoughts? I think it was seconded by Mr. Stevens. No, I, I seconded for discussion, so it's already seconded. Yep. Okay. Vote on it. Ready to vote on it? Roll call or voice vote? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Uh, uh, our, uh, should we do a roll call? Do we need to do a roll call or? Roll call. Yeah, roll call. Roll call? Yep, better do a roll call. Okay. The vote has started. Let me know if it has So the motion is to split the fees in half. Yep. So, so yes, splits the, the fees in half. Approve. No, we would not split the fees in half, and we would have to go back to discussing what we want to do. Right. So the motion would be the vote start. No, it came up and went away. Now it's back. Okay. okay. So the motion is to approve the appeal and reduce the fees to thirteen twenty-five, which is half of the original. Oh, well, only mine came up. Did you come? No. Okay. I got it. All right. I, I'll I'll go through. Alder Stevens. It was there. That's not. I got it. She's asking the vote. Well, you going to do the roll call? Register, yeah. Should I just not do no, this then? No, just do the roll call. Okay. I would say. Alder yep. Stevens. No. Alder Vandal. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I so was a, no, a no vote would, would deny the, the reducing it in half. Right. Correct. Mine would be a yes vote. Alder Stoyer. Yes. Alder Scandal. Yes. Okay, that passes on a vote of three. And can you get rid of mine so I can get to my screen again? Because yep. I still have the vote. Okay, there we go. It should go away. Yep, it did. Yes, okay. You can appeal so the appeal was approved and with the reduction of fees to 1325. Okay. So, okay. and that, that passed through. Oh, now all it came up on Alder Stevens. Oh. Well, it didn't come up on mine yet. It should be done. Sorry. Yeah. How do I okay. get rid of that? She, she's got to get rid of it. She's got to clear it up. I have no idea how to get rid of it. You got rid of mine. Um, I'll just do it. Do you want to mention? Okay. 
I think if we do another, if we happen to need, so you can't get to the um, item. Hold on. They could step, step up if they want. I don't see any outstanding votes, so I don't. I don't know how. Did, do you, have any idea how to do did that? you even when you entered him in? Yeah, no, it's it should be done. I don't have a, a pending vote out there to close out. I, so Alder yours, Stevens, yours went away, right? I just redid it. Okay. Oh, so we're good. We're good. Okay. All right. Never yep. mind. Okay. Okay. So then that, that's the action from the committee. It'll go to council. You can always appeal to the council. Uh, next, uh, the 16th at 6 o'clock is when the meeting is. So as of now, the committee has said we're, uh, uh, we uh, accept your appeal, but we're still charging you half. All right. Okay, okay we're on to. Thank you. Okay. Number 10. Consideration with possible action on General Ordinance Number 17-19, an ordinance creating Sections 33.03, .03, Subsection 4, and 33.05, Subsection 10, Green Bay Municipal Code, relating to provisional licenses. Now, I didn't see anything in our it's packet. It's not in the packet. I did uh, give a hard copy to, um, to the committee. We were working on it until 3.30 this afternoon. Um, so, um, state statute provides that the city is to issue provisional licenses, provisional retail liquor licenses, uh -huh. um, and that we may enact a process by which to do so via ordinance. Accordingly, we are presenting said ordinance draft, which delineates that process and circumstances under which a provisional retail license can be issued prior to the granting of a liquor license application, whether that be a new application <coughs> or a renewal. Um, so uh, kind of in general, um, it, it provides that, it appoints the city clerk um, can issue the provisional retail license provided um, that the um, applicant has gained approval um, of the authorities that they normally would need to get approval from to get the regular license. Um, so it's for the interim period between um, when the actual liquor license application is approved and when um, they actually they apply for the for the application. Is that correct? And is, this also takes into account the renewal. One. This kind of addresses correct. what we've just been through, yes. correct? So. Yeah. Um, it still so takes a 15-day waiting period, though, correct, or? We took nope. the 15-day waiting period. So basically, the, the it will take as long that? as it takes in order to for inspections to be completed and for criminal background check or PD approval to be completed. Um, Good job. Trying to think what else, like major things. So just kind of going through the language. The qualifications require that the application has applied for, or the applicant has applied for a regular license, um, that they have um, a submitted an application for a provisional license, um, the, and they meet all of the licensing requirements set forth in the section, which includes one of the following conditions, that either protection policy has approved the applicant's regular license application, but final approval by the council still remains. Um, the applicant has applied for a new regular license following the sale of an existing business that held a regular license of the same type and in order to contain or maintain continuity of business um, while the new application is pending, um, they're applying for this provisional. Um, with that, the applicant would have to prove to the clerk the uh, proof of control and or occupancy of the premise um, at which the provisional license is, is to be issued. Um, and third, the applicant held a uh, city uh, license of the same type during the expiring year um, and, however, did not timely submit a renewal application as a result of excusable neglect on the part of the applicant or, lastly, an administrative error caused by the city resulted in a delay in the application. Um, so. And then there's another section um, 
delineating um, all the different uh, conditions that have to be met, um, including being uh, qualified under Chapter 125.04, um, that they pay a $15 fee, that they get all necessary approvals from PD and from inspections, um, and that we currently aren't, that we actually do have licenses to give out, um, and that we're not past our reserves. Um, and the license would, the provisional would expire 60 days or when the regular license is approved, whichever is sooner, um, and then the city clerk reserves the right to revoke the provisional at any time if he or she discovers that um, a false statement was made on the application. And in addition, if a false statement is made on the application, um, we will be providing an amendment in Chapter 33 that that would be um, grounds for uh, denying Deny a new, new application. Yep. It wouldn't be possible to deny or uh, to non-renew based on that, but that would be a factor that could be considered to that if there was a false statement made on the provisional, um, that the new application that's pending should be denied based on that reason. So this was not handled at all before. This is the first time. Yep. Right. We did right. not have any provisions um, when we started doing research. Um, okay. It came up that a lot of municipalities don't have them, um, but that was something that was brought to our attention, and so um, it needed to be corrected. So you need it from us? Hmm? What do you need? Just um, approval? Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, so that it you want to wait for the well. approval? Yes. Hmm? Yeah, he just wants. Oh, I'll do Sorry, you were hot behind the thing. No, we have a quorum. Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. So motion to approve by Alder Vandalist, second by Alder oh. Stevens. So do you want to? Oh. Am I allowed to? Yes. Cool. We'll make a motion open a floor. Second. Sorry about that. Alder okay. Sawyer, second by Alder Van or, uh, Stevens to Thanks, Don. Give time for Randy to come back too. Uh, Don, six four one North Huron Street, the pier. Uh, Don Meldy. Um, I guess some questions I had, um, and this dealt all very, just kind of going over what you said again. But uh, so the city clerk um, can approve an application. Granted, they got everything done and didn't have their license yet by um, the end of the license period. They can issue a license so long as they meet all the qualifications and one of those categories applies to them. Meaning that meaning that either P and P has approved them and they haven't been approved by council, or there is a transfer of business. So the premise has been currently licensed, the business is transferring, so for Good. purpose of continuity. Um, third scenario would be there's a renewal. Renewal has not been filed on time. Excusable neglect or based on error. excusable yeah. right excusable neglect, which is, a, which is a legal standard. Or fourth category, there's been administrative error caused by the city, mm -hmm. resulting in a delay. Good. And then the other, so one of those four categories has to apply, and then the applicant has to meet all the other qualifications that are listed <coughs> in sub B. So obviously, this is for current applicants, not for new applicants. Like if somebody applies for a new license towards the end of the period? Both. It both. Would okay, cover it would both. cover both. Okay. But okay. be clear about the, what a new applicant mm -hmm. Right. So there's two conditions for a new applicant. One right. is continuation of business and the other one is... That they've been approved by PP. Right, but then right. there's a, a lag time in between. Perfect. And, and $15? Yes. Fifteen dollars, yes. Okay. That's the and statutory match. Sixty days can be revoked if anybody lies about anything. Right. Like or that. the application gets approved by council. Or denied. Or denied by or council. Denied by council. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, good. I just want to kind of go over the specifics of it. So, are you good with it? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, motion that goes for. Second. Motion by Alder Sawyer, seconded by Alder Vanderleest. Close the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, you're back in time. Yeah. So, uh, so we Melody have a had, motion to... He had some questions from the okay. okay. association. He was happy to satisfy the yeah. yeah. So I think this will make things much <coughs> smoother in the future. Mm -hmm. We had some bumps just a couple of weeks ago, and hopefully this will help. I'll make a motion to approve. Can we just vote on that? Mm -hmm. No, we didn't. We, we had a motion, and then um, 
Who said a motion to open the floor? We oh. got a motion to open the floor and close the Motion to open the Alder Door? Yes. Yeah. So I, I've been reading things and just wondering how, how did we get here? Is it because establishments forgot to turn in their license applications? Or, I mean, how, how, do, how do you forget to do that? Well, uh, not so much forgot or for, there could, there could be a number of reasons why, for I know of one instance where uh, the manager who's in charge of this uh, was, uh, had breast cancer and the So there the was a of reasons. Yeah, there, there are all kinds of reasons. And it might be just that they got busy and slipped up. I mean, I, I don't really care for the, what the reasons are. I only okay. care about the practical application here as long as the, the concern was that we're enabling incompetent businesses, right? If sure, you, that can be a concern. Right, yeah. and, and uh, I think as long as we're dealing with a business that um, this is a first oopsie, whatever the reason, uh, uh, this will help us cover that. And uh, as long as we don't have an ongoing pattern, which we think, and then take into account uh, when we uh, uh, address these things. So, so you, would, you look at each thing with this ordinance, we right. look at each case individually and right. and we're doing this because the state has a 15, that 15 day rule, right. but yet we're also allowed to have an ordinance like this. Mm -hmm. So it's just for, okay, all right. I, I'm glad to hear that it wasn't just because yeah, they were no. pretty irresponsible. There were really good reasons behind why some of these licenses There, there may have been. There may some, have been. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that we're kind of talking about two different things. So the the, okay. um, the late renewals, we'll call them, um, is is one thing. But the the statute, the state statute, requires us to have a provisional license ordinance. Okay. So that's what this is. This isn't at all related to the individual applications that came in late. Yeah. Those are there are some meetings. This week. Right, I'm, I'm right. on the committee right. for right. some right. of them. But, but it just for the purpose of, of this particular ordinance, it's not meant to address any of those in particular. Okay, that I understood. It's for future things, right? Correct. Right. If they yeah. can, yeah, I, I was aware of that. All right, thank you. Right. Anything so else? I made a motion. Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer. Second. Second. Second for Alder Stevens. Yeah. Uh, Looks very good. Thank you, staff. Really appreciate it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Okay. Item number 11. Number 11. Consideration with possible action and request by Alder Galvin. To the Protection of Policy Committee to have a procedure for alders to be notified when petitions communications are going to be addressed at the committee level, which is held at the June 10th Protection of Policy meeting. Alder Galvin. Good evening. Good evening. I was going to have to get a sleep one back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost said good morning. I got one in the car. Okay, all I'm looking for is uh, I've put in communications to staff in the past, and I know that we are shorthanded throughout the uh, City Hall with staff. And some of these communications get pushed back quite a bit. In fact, I've had a couple that have been waiting for over a year. What I don't want to have happen is I put in a communication, a lot of time goes by, it comes up on agenda, I happen to miss it because it's not the very next meeting. You guys sit here, the alderman doesn't show up, now what do you do? You know, receive and place on file, we start the process all over again, this kind of stuff. So I'm looking for something where I, I know when uh, an item comes up on uh, the appeals, I get notified with a letter that this item is coming up mm -hmm. on appeals, it's in your district, it's something. So something to say that, yeah, you had this item, you put it in there, and it's coming up on this date, so you know that if you can't be there, you can ask to have a change, have someone fill in for you, or at least so you don't miss it. Because we've wasted a lot of time uh, in the past. We have people that just for some reason things come up they don't show up and I think it wastes the committee time it wastes staff time to have them do a lot of work and so I don't want to have that happen in the future I had an idea last time but no one wanted to go forward until we ran it by you all right the idea was that uh, if I remember right 
uh, <laughs> um, that if a communication was uh, set to staff, put, put on hold for whatever reason, mm -hmm. that it would be noticed every meeting that that community, so we wouldn't lose track of it. It would always be on every agenda that it's being Pending. looked at by staff, that it's being uh, until it's oh, okay. ready Solved. to come so, forward. So it would be listed, but listed, listed as still on hold. Still right. on hold. Right. So that I mean, way, yeah. everybody knows what the status. Staff doesn't have to really worry about. I mean, I think it's just easier to keep track well, of it that way. That, if it's and that's actually probably a good idea because it might remind me after like six months that, hey, let's check in with staff and find out. Well, maybe something happened. Staff got sick or it got lost or. You know they got they switched positions and it got lost in the in the right. in the mix up. So yeah, actually that's that's probably a better idea. I uh, I don't have an issue with that. I guess I would leave it up to you guys and to hash that one out. Yeah, because I I think if we if we just set it up to staff and staff is working, well they may it's putting another burden on them. Whereas right. this way it's just automatically. Right. Yep. Go ahead, Bill. I, I remember some years ago. Um, you know, uh, up in Planet, Kevin Bach, there were he would bring, he would send out. You know, we'd, we'd put in communications and that, and he would talk about the different planning projects. But it seemed like he would follow up and say, "Okay, this this is going on." Each, but that was the only department that did it that I knew of. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with you because I've put in communications, and if I don't write it down or keep track, you know, it, it'll just kind of a lot of times it'll just disappear. So. I like Randy's idea of at least having it so that it's listed on each agenda, so right. that you have that. But I still think there's got to be. It would be nice to have a, a spreadsheet or something out there with all of the various communications or well, something. And I, I mean, realize it's that each office is separate. You can do something like Meister Task, but I just think that creates more work for it's staff right. than it trying might. to keep it updated and everything right. else. I mean, I just everyone's got their system, and I guess. If we were to notice that maybe one department was having trouble getting stuff up to, to a committee and then to council in a timely fashion, that could be addressed on a, on a separate issue. But I, I think most departments and most employees within those departments have their own systems and I think they tend to work good. It's just, you know, in the hierarchy of what's most important triage, you know, the this this one goes and so your item may just get pushed is back that, for a long time. Is that time. something that might be dealt with within the mayor's office now that we have Derek there as well? Well they can certainly look Jared. at that. Or Jared, I'm sorry. Um, okay. no, 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 I mean I'm just good. asking if that might be a possibility. Um, I've heard a couple of different things. So which possibility are you Well I'm just saying if, if communications are brought in, if there was mm -hmm. some kind of catch-all group that would have a list of all the communications that come through. Well, that would be Chris Tesky. Well, well not all communi- as a matter of fact, Chris and I were talking about this today. Uh -huh. um, we will address this as senior staff on Thursday. Um, Just the best way to do it. Well, because communications are coming in various places. They don't all come to the clerk's office. Right. They, there is no central currently, unless it goes to a council agenda, there is no current central location for communications. So, how would a communication get on the agenda if it doesn't go to Chris? I thought go to the to the staff to the um, chairman. Chair, the but then I the chair always gives it to Chris, right? No, the chair can give it to the person and the, the the person in the department that takes care of the agenda, which could be the director. It could be, yes. you know, um, someone like uh, Wendy Townsend, who is a director, but she mm. handles the. Uh, EDA and CDBG revolving loan fund. I was just saying focused. I, I would like to really see it central somehow. So this is something that we're going to discuss as your staff. If you'd like me to talk to you about it. Sure. Um, <coughs> then well, if we, we could get it back to the committee here, because I think, yeah. you know, because like, I, I mean, I remember putting in the thing for consent agendas. That's right. Remember about it, so it doesn't yeah. lost. But a consent agenda yeah. is completely separate from what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. No, no, well, it's a communication that was put in and it, we're still hanging on it. No, we We've never, we never made a decision on that consent agenda. I think it was. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Well, it I came to council? Was rejected. We did. We rejected the consent agenda. Boy, where was I that night? Mm -hmm. I don't we asked ourselves that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your pleasure? Should we hold this? Um, um, it, it could be just refer referred to, to staff. Refer refer to staff, to staff, staff is going to be discussing motion. it, and then and, and okay. then that's motion. Yeah. Motion. I can live with that. I mean, I'm not looking for a 
rapid decision right, here, right. But, but something well thought out that doesn't let anything slip through the cracks, right. that just keeps things moving along, and then not having alders miss their agenda right. item when it comes to yep. committee. That's that's all I'm looking for. Yep. So I'd well, make a motion to that effect with the stipulations that Randy had brought up, you know, about you know having it documented somehow and in then the agenda. In we the agenda. That would be Which one point, could and then also a uh, central yeah. central yeah. place. That, that's something central to consider. Central place, but but yes. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely something for staff to consider. But you know, I mean, if they can come up with a different. Fine. Yeah, absolutely. Fine. I'm, I'm open to anything that, that just gets. This that's done. my motion. All right. Thanks. So that would be a motion to refer to staff and create a policy to keep items that are referred to staff on the applicable agenda for staff to update as to status until the item has been completed. Yep. Second. Uh, motion by Alder Stoyer, signed it by Alder uh, Vanderleest. <coughs> We're all good? Yes. Every, uh, all everybody uh, approve? Aye. Aye. Everybody Aye. not approve? No, Aye. that passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yep. yep. People mm -hmm. are here. Yep, 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 yep. Do you know when El Pastor Cito? Yeah. Yeah, that's um, coming up. That's going to be, no, that's tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. But they should have gotten received another notice from Jamie. Yeah, I thought she reached out. Yeah, yeah she, she reached did. out she to everybody. I know that she um, called everybody. Um, here, I'll come. Thanks, Chris. All right, we're on to number 13. 13. 13 and then 12. Is there a reason for that? I mean, it doesn't really matter, I guess, but. Well. Or, no, I'm sorry. I skipped 12. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're on to number 12. And then we got to go back. I mean, why are they out of order? Is that just a just clerical mistake? And, and, and does it really matter if we went to 13, Wait, you're 12? out of order? We're yeah, order. it's 13 is next and then 12. You can say that. You're out of order. Yeah. So, but does it really matter? Could we do 13 and then 12? 12 is Alder Doris. Okay. So, in my system, 12 is what 12 should be. 12 is Alder Doris communication. And the right. number 13 is Alder Johnson's communication. Right, but in our listing here, 13 comes before 12. Okay. In my, it, does. It, it could just be an error in the system. Right. On my system, 12. So, but does it really matter which way we go? No, I'll just set current for 12 just to keep it in order. That's okay. So item number 12. Okay. I'm going to read it. Yeah, well, I, I got to scroll it up a little. Now I got to scroll it down a little. All right. Discussion with possible action on a request by Alderdorf, which reads, I believe that steps must be taken to ensure that infrastructure projects, including but not limited to those that we, the wheel tax will fund, must be chosen very carefully and be placed into a capital improvement plan. I'm requesting that P&P, Protection Policy, develop policy with the help of DPW, legal, and other appropriate staff. This policy must be developed so that the special interests and requests of individual <coughs> alders do not subvert the process of choosing the projects and that have been carefully researched by city staff as being appropriate for placement in a five-year plan. Parameters for choosing streets to be repaired, reconstructed, or resurfaced, as well as other infrastructure improvements should be clearly identified within this policy, which was referred to staff at, uh, at a previous protection and policy committee meeting. So staff, do we have anything put together at all? Uh, no. Okay, um, so Alter door. A member of DPW would be here to speak to this item. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not seeing anybody. Do you guys remember yep. when we yep. talked yep. about I remember this? All and this. it was I was told, you know, because I thought it would take a while, and then Director Grenier said, "Nope, it's not going to take any time at all. It's already basically done." But you might have been having a baby at the time, or two babies, perhaps. Yeah, I don't remember so, this item. So yeah, I don't I, think you were I here. Yes, been. you you were not. You were not here. Okay. So th this is all we can do right now is refer this to staff to get a policy and, and according to director Grenier they they have all the ideas and it should not take much to put it together and I had hoped he'd be here tonight mm -hmm. or someone from DPW mm -hmm. but they're not so I think we just have to move this to the next meeting if that's okay 
Right? Yep, uh, we're all the first And this item could be potentially, I'm not sure if, if Director Vermeer had a, had a conflict and wasn't able to attend, um, but this item can always be pulled at <coughs> council and Director Vermeer oh. will be on hand to answer to, so. Right. I, but, I think we should do the committee work yeah. okay. in committee, though. Sounds That's good. Right, so so I feel like we should bring it back here. Okay. Okay. So motion to hold to next. Motion. Well, well refer, refer to staff. Refer to staff. Okay. Refer to staff. Okay. Refer to staff. To refer so to come staff. Up, yeah. Got it. Yep. Okay. Okay. And the only thing I'd like to see is that if we're talking roads and everything, that I know they have gone through, but the old policy used to be when we did special assessments, after three or two or three asks, that street went to the bottom of the pile. That was a practice. That wasn't a policy. They well, just, they did it as a, it was a past practice. I had clarified that, right? And so, but we don't have to be held to anything that we necessarily right, right. did in the and past. Streets maybe should be that, repaired when they're bad. That's when they're what bad. my concern is. Yes. I would like to make sure we're starting from scratch. Absolutely. And all streets are all equal now, and we and judged, do the ones that right. are the worst. That's exactly <clears throat> yeah. what I that, that's the only thing I want to make sure is that we're not leaving those. And we'll we'll have those discussions in committee right. when we get yep. a policy. We'll even level preliminary policy. policy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Second the motion. Motion by Alder Stoyer to refer to staff. Second by Alder Vandalese. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Have fun. Mm -hmm. Now 13. Now 13. A request by Alder Johnson for consideration of possible action on the creation of a safe park initiative that permits overnight parking for those who may have consumed too much alcohol in an effort to deter drunk driving incidents. <coughs> the examples are Seattle, and we have a link, Colorado, we have a link. This item referred to staff from a previous Protection of Policy Committee meeting. Alder Johnson. Hey. Gentlemen, how are you? Good morning. Good. How are you? So this was uh, an idea that uh, came to me from the Brown County Tavern League. Don's going to speak on this in a minute, but um, I think the concept is pretty clear. We just want to be able to um, give people a safe option for those who have found themselves in an unfortunate circumstance. Um, rather than giving them or forcing them into a choice of having to drive their car or uh, some other terrible decision, we'd like to um, obviously give them that ability to leave their car, park safely for the night, not be subjected to a parking ticket. Um, I've been uh, I've shared this quite publicly I've received a lot of uh, warm reception to it uh, people are very excited about it seems like a common-sense approach to um, I guess one mechanism or one way to keep people off the streets we've uh, uh, had a very productive meeting with um, the parking division with public works with the police department uh, and the Brown County Tavern League we kind of vetted out a number of um, scenarios if you will um, you know, hey, what if this happens? What if that happens? And how do we respond and react to that? I feel like we came up with a pretty sound plan and proposal uh, that I'm going to actually let Don go into a little bit more detail with. But um, I think, you know, for me, at the end of the day, this isn't necessarily about creating a free pass for those for those folks who have maybe made intentional uh, decisions to find themselves inebriated. This is really about protecting people on the streets who didn't have a choice. And and so, if we can find a way to keep folks off the streets. Uh, who have, who, who again have have consumed too much alcohol and protect those those innocent lives who are on the street? Uh, I think to me that is a win-win all around. So was it just a real quick? Can I answer? Yep, yep. Yeah. You know, this is something that I've talked about with some other bar owners downtown as well. And would there be some kind of a system where there'd be a placard or something handed out? Yes. To say we'll, we'll pick it up tomorrow or or what have you. Something like that. Again, I'm yeah, gonna let Don speak to the specifics of it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he'll work. Okay. But yeah, we've got that all figured out. Right. And I'll that was, again, this was done uh, through that joint meeting uh, with all of those respective entities that would have some type of oversight or touch this program in some way. And I felt that we walked out of that meeting, um, again, not only with a really good dialogue, but everybody kind of nodding their heads yes, that this is this is a program that we feel could effectively work here in Green Bay. It's had great success in other cities like uh, Seattle, Austin, a number of cities in Colorado. No reason that I don't think it couldn't work here. Uh, are you looking for us to refer this to staff to come back with something, or is I feel we've got something. I mean, you've got something, already, right, Don? Well, I, I, do I have to open the floor? Or? Yeah, well, yeah, we'll open yeah, the floor in a minute. But if you've got something, then we just once we get it, we put that together and pass that. Okay, sure. That's what you're looking for. That's what we can do. Okay. One quick well, question, yes, Brian. How about the fire department? Did you actually talk with the fire department as well? Um, was the fire department at the meeting? I don't believe that they were. No. Um, we, we talked about this once before, and uh, the fire department did mention that 
you know, in certain areas like close to the stadium district, that the streets are so narrow that they can hardly get their vehicles down. So you might want to just reach out to the fire department sure. before we get it all final. And this wouldn't apply in scenarios uh, like that. And like one of the primary game. reasons is because it actually has to be a uh, Brown County Tavern League member that issues the, the safe park permit. So if you can imagine in that scenario, uh, particularly in those residential neighborhoods, uh, I mean, it would have to be homeowners that are giving out the permit, and, and that's obviously not going to be the case. So. Uh, there has to be a sort of a central place that can kind of help regulate the, the issuance of those permits and uh, we feel that that's probably our best partner at this point um, to, to kind of help ensure that we regulate it so that it's a program that doesn't become abused. Good information and thank you. Yep, yep, go ahead, Elder Dark. This is a question or are you booting me? I'm, well, I can boot you, you can stand there. Right. But, oh, I did get um, it. I just want to give my support to this because I was on the EOD task force with the police department and this is an idea that we had come up with at the time and so we didn't get any traction on it. We yeah. talked about it. You might have been at those meetings? No, no maybe it was a different president. I think there was a different president at the time. Probably she was, so. yes. And so we thought it was a really great idea and somehow it just it didn't go any further. Some of our other ideas happened, but that one didn't. So I'm very supportive of this. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds good. Any other questions? Well, maybe well, well, we, we got to hear the plan first. Let's hear well, yep. well, well, the plan. Open the floor. So, so right. motion open the floor. Thanks. By Alder Stevens. Seconded Second. by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The floor is open. Good day, gentlemen. Is, is plan me. These are just for study, not to you. For yeah, this is just us. Oh, come on. Together in the last few hours. No, it's been together for a while. I just printed it off today. Um, Don Meldy, 641 North here on the Pierre Wisconsin 50105. So, um, brought this forward a couple of years ago, swung the bat again this year, and made a lot of traction with it. Obviously, um, this would be uh, numbered and have years on it and would go to different uh, tavern league bars. And if somebody had too much to drink and they're getting a responsible means home, we would put this up on their visor and they would have waived the 3 to 5 a.m. parking ban. So um, specifically just 3 to 5 a.m. Uh, Washington Street. After talking with the parking division and the police department also, it has its own set of rules that have to be monitored and regulated and modified. So um, I at least got a little bit more uh, far th further in advance than, uh, than it is right now. And things are trending in the right direction in Brown County. Um, I'm on the Brown County Traffic Safety Commission as well. I maintain place of last drink and it goes over all the OWI convictions. In Brown County in the last year, and so far this year, we are down 126 compared to last year, so it's 27% decrease, which is awesome. So just trying to keep things trending in the right direction. So uh, I don't know what we're here for specifically. I do know through Chris Perlot from the traffic division that we're going to an INS meeting on Wednesday. Is that sound right? Could be. So yeah. this kind of goes to INS too? Yeah, so INS is Wednesday at 6. Well, that's confusing. Yeah. So I found about this. Parking division oversees it. Yep. So then what is it we're doing? This is where it was originally referred. Oh, it is. It, well, is it, it was originally referred here with the assumption that it was going to be an ordinance change, but staff had since confirmed that this could be an administrative thing that they could enact. So we will actually pass on, uh, take a pass. I'm going to defer to legal on why it's here then. Why it needs to stay no. here. It, it doesn't need to stay here. We can just receive and place on file. File. The, item That's, I'm I'm just, oh, the reason we made this is because there's no change in legislation. This is just yep. something that we can do with the parking division will okay. acknowledge. So we're not um, okay. changing the law at all. This is just something they do. And, and I went through Chris Perlot and Steve Grenier from the parking division and Captain Warwick from the police department and everybody's given on board. I will talk to the area fire departments and reassure them that it is just for, you know, commercial businesses and side streets and they're staying off fire hydrants and, and all the like. So. Can I yeah. ask one quick question? Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, Don, so Brown County Tavern League, there's how many, what percentage of taverns are Brown County Tavern League? Uh, we have 154 members currently. And oh, it's, okay. uh, um, I believe there's 398 in Brown County, but then you're talking about the ones out in yep. Denmark. Right. And exactly. as far as municipality yeah. ratio, I'm not quite positive. I'd have to look at that. But All right, but it would be nice to have buy-in. Yeah, but yeah. That's, that's another story. Yeah, exactly. All right, that's good. That's all I, I see some of the concerns that were 
risen in the past mm -hmm. that sunk this are being addressed here. So yeah, uh, so we've talked about this. Yeah, the extreme weather and all that, and emergency and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, there's definitely stipulations to it. Yep, obviously, yep. you can't be out there in extreme weather yep. search situations. And so, it's yeah. going to be placed visibly. Obviously, it's going to have the day clearly visible in the year. So it's going to yep. be for one night only, not for multiple nights. Things yep. like that. And, so. and, and in the past, when this did come up, um, there, there was an effort to try and steer people to certain, like the park and the ramp. Yeah. And uh, is that still going to be yeah, part absolutely. of this initiative? Matter of fact, Chris Perla is working on an interactive map that's going to be throughout the city that shows places where people can park for the evening. For instance, on Broadway by the viaduct, um, there's a parking space there. Not a lot of people know about it. And they can park right. there overnight without right. us having to do this yeah. for them as well. So, uh, yeah, we're working through them, and hopefully the CVB will jump in and, and be able to show us at their place also that there are places to park overnight throughout the city. So. Have you seen other communities that might have done something like this? Um, not specifically like this. I just kind of played off of what I found through my research through uh, what Brian was alluding to in Seattle and Austin and Colorado that, you know, these big cities are working on a way, so we should be able to do one ourselves as well. Okay. Yeah. Buy a duck. Buy a night of chicken. <laughs> Marks, what are we just, what Marks are we Brothers, it's a classic. Come on. Motion to receive and place, place on file. file by I will Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Vanderlees. Yeah, yep, go ahead. Two, we two do more comments, we points of clarification. So yep. one is, I think... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The floor needs to be closed. But motion to close the floor. Oh, right. We opened it for... Yep, motion, motion to close the floor by Alder Stoyer. Second it by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the floor is closed. And motion, so a motion to, to receive a place on file by Alder Stoyer. Second it by Alder Vanderleest. And before we vote, we yep. I just yep. want to make two points of clarification, two questions that uh, both of you gentlemen had, had brought up. One is, um, we are, as part of this dialogue, we did determine that it was important for us to continue to proactively promote locations where people could park. I think it's important to note that this is more of a reactive policy uh, that you have in front of you. And so we hope that, of course, the, the proactive approach combined with the reactive approach gives us a more holistic way to help curb. Uh, incidents that that might create unfortunate circumstances the other piece of it uh, Alder Stoyer to your point uh, right now we felt that the Brown County Tavern League uh, with their expertise has a way to help train people on how to properly uh, deploy this particular policy um, your question is the exact same one that I brought up and, and uh, how can we ultimately get this unrolled out to anybody that, that is able to participate and I think to me that would be continue to be a long-term goal but seeing as how this is an administrative start policy that can be enacted, I think this is a great place to start where you can do a proof of concept, uh, determine what works, what may not be working with the program, and adequately adjust before we, we roll it out to, to every participating organization in the city. And I did want to mention, I was with uh, Alder Dorf on that committee as well, and we bounced that around quite a bit, but I'm glad that, is, that something's moving forward. So. Good. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that is received and place it on file. Good luck at INS. And we're on to 14. Correct. Consideration is possible action on request by Alderdorf to reform a short term task force led by the police department, including fire, alders, uh, risk management, Celestine Jeffries, and other important stakeholders to review the security practice of the city building and the city employees to determine what changes and training are needed to ensure that our municipal buildings, municipal buildings are safe and secure for both employees and the public. Thank Mark. you. So um, on May 31st, 2019, there was a, a mass shooting at the Virginia Beach Municipal Center and 12 people were killed, four were wounded. Um, I was able to, because I am part of the Alice Corporation, I teach for, the, the, for Alice, um, I was able to get some of the police recordings and there was a lot of confusion um, about what door casualties were at because their doors weren't numbered at that center. Um, their, the police could not get in, they didn't have the badges to get into the building. So things were delayed quite a bit. So bringing this to the city of Green Bay, a few years ago we did start looking at um, the active shooter response, a response to a violent critical incident and some of the employees of City Hall were trained and, and some of the things were put in place started to number doors. I'm not sure if the outside doors all got numbered. Did they? No, they, I don't think they did. They did not. There, I, I believe, uh, I took the school district of Green Bay through this entire process to create a plan for the, each of the schools in Green Bay. 
So I would like to be on this task force, and I've got the agreement of the police chief and the fire chief that are very much behind creating this task force to look at what are the steps that we need to take to make sure that our employees are secure and that if members of the public are secure. So for example, that we should have a way to communicate with everyone in the building. I don't think there's an all call. There is. There is now. But we need training. But, but we need training uh, so everyone can access the all call. If something's happening on the sixth floor and not happening on the first floor, then the first floor can evacuate. But if something's happening on the first floor, nobody should be coming downstairs. Um, they should be sheltering in place and barricading in place. I know that the federal government um, it does, there, there are laws around ensuring that your employees, if you work for a government agency, any government agency, schools, our government agency, they have to be trained in multiple response options to these violent critical incidents. So we started doing this as a city, and I want to make sure that we continue doing it. I, I go throughout the state of Wisconsin, I do building assessments of schools, I look at this building and I just say, oh my, you know, there are certainly some things that we need to put in place to make this building safer. And not just this building, it's all of our municipal buildings, you know, it's got to be all of them, not just City Hall. So I'm asking for your support, I'm asking you to um, approve forming this task force because that's where I was told that to come. Right, but see, and that's I'm wondering, wouldn't this be the mayor's office? Wouldn't he be putting a task force together? I mean, I mean. Uh, well, I certainly think that the mayor would be open to Alderdorf taking the leadership, especially given Alderdorf's um, professional <coughs> role in the state of Wisconsin. Right. So I, I think we could refer this so to the mayor's office to put together a task force, and you could certainly look okay. at the mayor's office. I think. I think Meet with the mayor. That would be his. Uh, so make a motion out of that. Fair so I would. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I mean. We support, support. I think we all support yes. it. Yeah, but well, it's I just think, a matter of. I think of it's, it's an it. executive a task force. Sounds executive to me. That sounds like mm -hmm. something the uh, yeah. the mayor's office should be put right. together. So sure. we recommend this to the mayor's office. Yeah, that's my motion. Well, somebody else can be. Motion to the mayor's office. Motion by Alder Stevens. Second. Seconded by Alder Vanderly. So all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Barb, you'll definitely be on it. Yeah. I think yeah. you yeah. 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 uh, Keep okay. us in the loop. Yeah, you will. All right. I think I have the next item, so may as well stay up here. Yep, yeah. We're the tasking you with the task force. The All right. The courthouse is going through the same procedures that they're, they're looking into. Mm -hmm. you know, Who's going through the same The procedure? courthouse. The courthouse is. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're going to be doing some things. Good. Like Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. They're Just judgmental say. over there, though. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are we ready for 15? Yes, item number 15. Oh. Item 15. Closed, we have to have it open. Yeah, we have to keep the door open, yeah. What's going on? I don't know. There, there was a meeting and they're done. Uh, consideration was possible action and request by Olderdorf to research and create a fair housing ordinance for the City of Green Bay, which was referred to the Protection and Policy Committee by the Plan Commission at the June 10th meeting, Olderdorf. Well, that was, if you recall, oh. we had that meeting occurred for a few hours. Um, just prior to our council meeting, mm -hmm. I think in May, and I was the only elder that went. So then I went and talked to um, the um, Economic and Development Department and, and Cheryl O'Neill Wig, and you know said, "What could my role be?" And my role could be asking for an ordinance to be created, and so that would be referred to staff. So yeah, that's perfect. what that's all I'm asking is that it be referred to yep. staff to and then come back here and come down. back and then we yep, can look down. at it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Good idea. Motion refer to staff uh, to come up with a, a, a ordinance um, to address or just to address our our uh, fair housing. There was a report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to address the needs in that report. Second. That was a. I guess I'm making that motion. Well, okay. you're making <laughs> it, yeah. Cause I guess. Just <laughs> I just made it. Okay. Seconded by Alder Stoyer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. I have to come up for item 16. Oh, well. I have the communication. Item 16, yes. Item 16, consideration of possible action by Alder Weary, which states to request a report of police call volume on Western Avenue from Oneida to Taylor, which addresses, uh, which, what addresses our habitual problems? Have nuisance plans and bills for service been issued? Develop a plan moving forward to reduce the number of police calls in the area. 
previously held at the May 13th and June 10th protection policy meeting. So you're here for... So I'm here for um, Alder Weary, who unfortunately was unable to make it tonight and is asking if it could be held till the next meeting. Well, we've already, we, we did take this up and we did have the, re there's a report. You have that a report? He just... Yeah, yeah. the report okay. was, and, and he, yeah. uh, what I would like to know, we did, uh, police did meet with uh, Janet Angus. Yeah, I, I hope too. to be there, and I, I was, was sick, so I couldn't. Oh, you were there? I was there. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, so, if we could get just an update on that. Okay. Um, we did have a meeting with Miss Angus where we discussed um, the report. I do believe the report was included in last <coughs> month's agenda packet. Mm -hmm. um, just last week, Alder Weary reached out to Michelle, our crime analyst, and she emailed him the report directly. He responded, Great, that's what I would like. Um, we are doing numerous things um, to address the issue of crime and the problems in that general area. Um, I can't get into specifics right. what we're doing, but it is something that we are working with um, Ms. Angus um, and other residents of that neighborhood uh, to work together to help reduce the crime and the calls for service over there. You included the neighborhood associations too. They were there. Yes. They yep. representation. Yep. So. Um, I believe when we left last time at the end of summer, we were going to try and meet again to see if what we did over the summer months was helping to improve the area. Um, one thing I found out was all the lights in the Colburn Park, the street lights, none of them are working. So we are reaching out to WPS and uh, to make sure those are all up and going. That's one thing I can say. That's that a bright idea. That. Um, so we're seeing various things, hoping that they work, seeing what has more effectiveness. Uh, we will be parking either our Badger or Armadillo, our video response vehicle, I guess. We will be parking that down in the park very shortly. It's getting some minor repairs. Um, but those are just a couple of things we're doing at the police department to address it. It sounded like you were also gonna, depending on officers in the area that they could pull over and work on a report, they could pull into the park because there seem to be issues at Colburn, so yes, that was part yeah, of it. Yeah, and in fact, just today when I was out and about, I made sure I drove through Colburn Park and um, mm -hmm. we're instructing officers to make their presence very well known in the park. Um, so any issues that might be coming from other parks that we're monitoring, um, that it's not happening there. We are looking at possibly installing cameras in the park as well. Um, so if we do see any activities going on, we'll be able to monitor it on camera. Any horses? In the parks, no. Bikes. No. Maybe bikes. Yeah. I think the parks would be made for the horses. Yeah. And another question for the lieutenant. Yep. Uh, are they going to move forward with that, you know, shutting that, that one Fifth Street site, uh, put a chain across it, that the park is closed, to keep the traffic out there after late hours? Well, I don't know the status of that. I do believe there's some concerns about liability if someone hits the chain or runs over the chain. Um, who's going to lock it up every night and unlock it every morning? Um, that's something I believe the Parks Department would have to um, figure out and do. We would love to have it there, um, but I just don't know if... I did put a communication in to, you know, to, to see if we could get that. I, I pass Fifth Street quite often, you know, late at night, and there's there's always traffic in and out of there. And, and some of the neighbors, you know, they pretty visual what's going on. I know Mr. Wagner, yes. see some of his neighbors, they try to keep a tab on what's going on as well. And, and especially now that the pool <coughs> is closed for the summer, it's not operating, that what? other people help, I guess, monitor the area because the undesirables don't want to be around that they want their privacy sure. so now that the pool's not open that allows them even more privacy so mm -hmm. um, well, we're trying and brainstorming various ideas working with uh, Mr. Wagner um, Miss Angus to um, see what works and is the most effective in that area sounds like they're on top of things that's great yeah. it was very informative meeting I'm glad it was there yeah we should that's all right how long did it go? Hours, hours, a couple of hours. Yeah. All right. But the uh, result was pretty good from uh, you seen the the, the constituents, uh, Janet Angus. Yeah, Janet the, was. I mean, she well, she very my properties and right, this right. and that and traffic but and activity. Seen. But they sounded like, hey, we're on the right path. And I think 
Michelle did a fantastic job about talking about all the resources they have, and I think there's sometimes a thought that maybe not enough is being done. But I, we were, I was impressed that you know the type of research that they're doing to make sure they have resources for all of us, and that so I was very satisfied with that. And she's more than willing to share any of that data with us. You know. I think we just received and placed on file. What do you got? Motion to receive and place on file. By Elder Stoyer. Second by Elder Stevens. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That is received and placed on file. <coughs> are we ready for informational? We are ready for the liquor violation report. No. Liquor violation report from the police department for July 8th, 2019. We have no violations. Yeah, this is how many times in a row now? Yeah, couple. Motion to receive and place on file by Alder Vanderlees. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's received and placed on file. How about? A motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Alder Sawyer. Second. Second by Alder Vanderlees. Let's see now. Do we need to discuss this? Better not. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are done. Good work, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, mine are.